Hey guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another live stream. Today is a zoologist day, through and through zoologist day, uh, because my scent of the day has been a, a zoologist fragrance. We are testing four new zoologist fragrances. So if you've been following the channel, you know that I have been working my way through a zoologist sample set. And uh, today we have chipmunk, we have Panda, uh, we have, let's see, what's up with these lights? Uh, we've got Chipmunk, Panda, Beaver, and Sloth. Four new zoologist fragrances, everyone's favorite. And um, so we're going to test these, but I'm also wearing a zoologist as my scent of the day. Not a good choice, I'll tell you that. I should have worn something else and just tested these. I did not enjoy these enough for a scent of the day. But uh, today I'm wearing Macaque Yuzu Edition on my left hand. And I've been wearing the Fiji Apple Edition on my right hand. So I was going to do a comparison video. Uh, <laughs> good evening, Keith. Hello, brother. My brother from another mother, Rich Mitch, he has arrived. Love me some beaver. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, let me get some fresh sprays going on in here because I want to spray macaque one more time. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about what I was going to talk about on a video today beforehand that... Um, didn't happen. Life got in the way. Work got in the way. Work extended longer than I expected. And, um, and I had to take the little one on a bike ride because I just was forced to. I had to. And so, so yes, I was planning on dropping a comparison video today, just a regular old video on the comparisons between zoologist macaque yuzu edition on the left hand and zoologist macaque Fiji Apple Edition on the right hand, but I'm just going to tell you guys what I think. Um, I'm just going to do a quick respray, and I'm going to go through this as if we're going to do a quick video, and then we'll do the usual four new testing. We're knocking out this zoologist sample set pretty fast going this way. This has been good. This has been a good way to knock some samples out, and I think we have a blueprint for the future of testing new sample sets now. Um, so let me just see who's here. Michael John's here. Welcome, brother. Ah, Norwin's here. Hello, all. Hey, Ram. Good to see you in the chat, man. Ah, yes, Nick's here. Chaps and Chapettes. I like that intro. Evening, Chaps and Chapettes. That's very Texan. You know, that works good, Nick. Hello, everyone in the chat, indeed. Okay, so before we um, we talk about Macaque by Zoologist, which came out a couple years ago now, 2021, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we are going to do an unboxing because that's what happens when you constantly buy stuff like I do. Stuff constantly arrives. And I was actually waiting for a big package to arrive today. And it did not. This is the smaller package that I was kind of uh, expecting, but not as excited for. The big package will be here in a day or two, I would assume. So uh, this, let me show you what I ended up getting. I got this for 15 bucks, which I consider it a steal at $15. Uh, let me show you what it is. So first of all, she sent me a sample of Terre de Hermes, whoops, which fell out. Obviously, she was not aware I've got 500 mils of Terre de Hermes. Um, so, yes, good old Terre. Good old Terre de Hermes. Okay, so we'll just put you with all the other million samples. You can go live with your brethren. Go live with your brethren. And what I got, what I ended up getting for $15, which I thought was a great deal, it was actually like 13 bucks plus a couple bucks in shipping, is this. Is anyone familiar with this? This is Cologne Salone by Parfums de Nicolai. And as far as colognes go, I hear good things about this one. Um, this was actually 
hyped up. Well, maybe not hyped because I don't think he hypes fragrances, but it was uh, spoken highly of by the great Thomas from early Greek. And, you know, these are the type of bottles I should be buying with my collection nowadays. You know, what's in here? 20 mils, 25 mils. Perfect for me. Absolutely perfect. Um, smells good from the cap. Uh, I know Thomas from early Greek absolutely loved cologne. Cologne. Um, it's obviously an eau de cologne, but it's not just an eau de cologne. It's an eau de cologne stimulant. Hmm? An eau de cologne stimulant. Very nice. Uh, I love the little blurbs, you know? Not just an eau de cologne, an eau de cologne stimulant. And so um, alcohol 80 proof plus parfum, alcohol 80 proof volume plus perfume. Huh. Made in Italy. It was 100 mil initially. Very cool. I think that's a good deal. I think that's a great deal for me. I get to talk about a new fragrance, cologne, cologne, and I bought it off of a um, off of a wreck from someone that I really trust. Parfums, uh, Nikolai. There it is, cologne, cologne. Um, nineteen eighty nine. This came out. Holy shit! I had no clue it was this old. Uh, bergamot, I definitely get bergamot and orange and lemon just from the atomizer and, and lavender for sure. It's very herbal. Uh, I think this will be great for the high heat of Texas. And I don't know if this is a old bottle or what. It looks like it's one of the older bottles from back in the day. Uh, it looks like the new bottles kind of look like a new parfum to look like the newer version of, um, Parfum de Nikolai. It's got that little uh, logo that she puts on the new bottles that looks like this. So it looks like the new bottles have this logo on it that looks like this. I think this is actually an older bottle even. So cool. I like stuff like this. This is good stuff. All right. Awesome. The cap doesn't stay on at all. I got to remember that. Um, but yes, I'm going to call this a winner. You can go live right here with your cologne brethren for now. If anyone has experience with uh, cologne salon, I would love to hear. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, Sense of the day, Zerzhov via Caviar One. Never heard of it, Michael John. While we're chatting and I'm catching up, I'm going to spray some of the macaque on my hands again because I'm going to just use this stuff up. This is not my... Uh, this is not my style anyways, you know? It's not my thing. So let's use this juice up. Good old macaque yuzu on my left hand. And we're gonna do macaque Fiji apple edition on the right hand. All right, let's see what we get here. Okay, so. Let me catch up on the comments and then we'll do this video that I was going to do separately that we're just going to roll it all into one Zerzhov video. One, just one big Zerzhov love fest tonight. Hey, Rick. Ah, I'm so glad you're wearing mitts, my friend. I'm so glad you love it, too. I, um, I got an Instagram message from Rick today saying, thank you so much for turning me on to mitts, man. This stuff is amazing. And I said, I'm shocked more people don't talk about it. It is amazing. And he said, it's because it's not a bro fragrance. And I was like, you know what? I think you're 100% right, Rick. But for people like us, it's primo. Hermes Iris Ukioi. Never smelled it, Bosco. There's a lot of Hermes I've never smelled. I really want to smell that new Violet Volinka or whatever it's called. Um, I actually have not smelled many from that Hermesence line. Queer Dange, I have a full bottle of and I love it, but I blind bought it. And it worked out to be a love. But I really want to try, you know, I think they have a Santal. They have a, they have so many from that Hermesens line I've never tried. Ah, Michael John, scent of the night, newly acquired, less up straights, DeSandra's. Do you love it, number one? Number two, do you get the uh, comparison to the great Aramis Devon? Do you get the comparison or do you think I'm losing my mind? 
especially in the first half an hour to an hour, I would say. Do you get that Devin comparison? I mean, I love them both, but you put the old handy dandy boxing unboxing knife away. Rachel, Rachel in the house. Evening again, Rams. Evening chats into the day. Montana Black Edition. Is that supposed to be Montana Black Edition? I don't think I've ever smelled that. Black Edition. Is that Montana Parfum Dome Black Edition, maybe? I don't know that one, Dimitri. Goodness, I'm really enjoying my Les Up Straight samples lately. They are amazing. Are they not? Just for the quality of the ingredients and the blending and the type of perfume that people like us love to wear. That's who it's made for. It's um, And you know what? I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that the work that Remy from... Uh, I always forget the name of that house that he founded, the materials house. Matri, uh, I can never remember it, but Remy's an amazing person. And that trio with Antoine Lee and Remy, I really think what they did with Les Demo Dablas and then what they're doing with Eugene's brand uh, is going to now bring in the bigger fish to the water. I think that uh, they kind of started on a smaller scale to prove what can be done uh, using ingredients of that quality and that you know, craftsmanship. And I think you're going to start seeing more brands, you know, try to go that route. So good news for us, for perfume lovers, I think. Um, but it may be, you know, it may be the same old cycle that we see, though. The big houses might now try to get into it. Um, some bigger fish may join and we'll see how the cycle plays out. But I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for what Eugene has accomplished. Everything fell into place exactly how it was meant to be, you know. At work as usual, sent to the night, Bellamy Shaker. Oh, Antonio. Oh, you're touching my heartstrings with Shaker Bellamy, man. You're probably the best smelling guy in a 1500 mile radius. I have to test more of his stuff. I actually have a video on a print called Anthamara, I believe. You can go check that video out to kind of get some of my thoughts. I have a full bottle of. Um, I own one full bottle of a print that I bought with my own money. It was Strangers Perfumery Cigar Rum. And I actually like cigar rum. Um, it's it's not bad. I just, none of his work has really moved me in the same way that Russian Adams' work for Ariz Ladore has moved, has moved me. But, you know, at one point, Russian Adams' work didn't move me. I thought maybe Russian Adam was on the downslope and Bortnikov was a, in a trajectory like this. And now I completely reversed, well, not even reversed, but I definitely reversed my thoughts on Russian Adam, you know, his his best stuff coming early on. I'll tell you that. Uh, and and so maybe it's just a case that I don't know enough prints. Like I need to smell more print in Lom Ross's work. I think that's probably what it's going to come down to. My husband has been promising me a bottle of Bellam since Christmas. The one he actually bought turned out to be Shalimar Tonka Millicene, which is fun but I need my less abstrates. Honestly, um, I, uh, I, I love this. I love um, uh, all of the less abstrates. Bellam was probably my uh, least favorite. Although if you compared it to Shalimar, Tonka Imperial, I would definitely take Bellam over that. Cherry Mugwa, Pure Havana. I love Pure Havana. I really want a bottle of Pure Tonka. Uh, I'm going to try to help Ram with that. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Nick is my guardian angel, man. He sends me cufflinks all the time. Bellamy Shaker, I'm telling you, man, just walking around smelling like a boss. I've only smelled cow from zoologists and only once several months ago. I seem to recall it somehow reminded me of MFK's Aqua line. That's an interesting shout. I can't speak to that because I don't really know MFK's Aqua line. But cow is very pleasant. What you all wearing today? That's right. What are you all wearing today? Um, we're going to do real quick this macaque comparison video. Apparently, there's two versions. So there's this Yuzu version and there's the Fiji Apple version. And I'll just, um, holy shit, look what Rachel's sampling. The new fat, de fat eau de parfum. What she's talking about is this. There's a new Jacques Fat. And it's the Iris, the Iris de Fat. 
And this is the Parfum version. I'll do a video on this one day soon. Probably there's going to be a lot more uh, demand or a lot more people interested in learning about uh, La Iris de Fat. Now that they're putting out an Eau de Parfum, what's the retail price, Rachel? Just out of curiosity, what's the retail price? Um, I know it's expensive. Something like, uh, I don't know, 30 mils of this, if memory serves, was over a thousand bucks. So I, I'm sure the Eau de Parfum is not cheap. I'm also loving my Les Epstraits to Sandra's is blossoming off my skin. It is really, really good. That's right. Long time no see. I'm on a, you know, I'm on a mission to get through these sample sets, man. I can't have them lying around. If I keep having them lying around, they've been lying here for weeks, months, some of them years I've never smelled. And so if I don't do these videos, I'm just going to smell them myself and you guys aren't going to be a part of it. So I'm, I want to make this happen. So I can put my thoughts on paper, but I was planning on doing a separate video today on um, macaque comparison and then doing our usual four first impressions. But we're going to do what I was going to talk about on macaque now so we can just lump it all together. Time constraints and life got in the way for me earlier. Um, so macaque, let me just tell you a little bit about macaque real quick. Uh, it came out in... Um, 2021 and the perfumer was actually a woman uh or, so actually let me let me stop and take that back because the original macaque came out in 2016 i've never smelled that one okay uh that production of the original macaque was discontinued and the original uh macaque from 2016 was done by a perfumer named sarah mccartney and sarah mccartney owns this brand right here she owns the brand of, uh-oh, now I got to find her bottle. Here it is. Um, she owns the brand of 4160s Tuesdays, which I must admit I'm not a big fan of, uh, but I haven't smelled a lot of her work, but she sits on the board of Ifra. And I've had some interactions with her actually like on YouTube and me and her don't see eye to eye. We don't see eye to eye with what Ifra does and she will give you the companies, you know, she is like a company woman. She'll give you the company line for Ifra all the time. And you know me, I'm the against the stream guy. So I'm talking to her about, you know, um, Ifra being kind of like a front for the perfume oil houses to force the designers and stuff like that to buy their oils at an inflated price when it's no no necessary need and she just wasn't having it and i wasn't having what she was feeding me so we kind of butted heads a little bit on other youtube videos over the years good luck finding those but uh i think they could have been on wolf's from the lofts or channel but they were years ago and um so i just you know most of her stuff that i've smelled i'm not really interested in by supporting her brand really anyways but the one that i did support i like it's a fresh take on patchouli called shazam and um again i like this because if you are craving a patchouli uh if you're craving a patchouli in the warmer weather shazam isn't bad to reach for it's a little bit fresher and easier to wear it's not that deep dark rich uh patchouli i wore Speaking of patchoulis, I wore a couple fragrances to bed in between the, you know, wrist and elbow sprays that you guys saw me do last night. So in the middle, I put uh, one of my favorite patchoulis of all time, Critzia Moods Womo. Oh, my God. You know, uh, yesterday that smoky patchouli came out. It's so good. That's one fragrance me and Rich Mitch are just going to have to agree to disagree on. And I put um, I put uh, Davidoff's. Zeno right here. And I just kind of went to my wife and said, which one do you think? And usually she's always like, eh, whatever. I don't care. Just go away. Either I love it or, you know, usually it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. Go away. Or, oh, I hate it. This one with Zeno, she was like, oh, I like it. Wait a minute. I really like it. And I was like, good. Cause usually the things that she says she really likes are the vintage stuff. So like she likes Koros and Teus Zeno, for whatever reason, even though she's my age, she also has a little bit of a vintage nose, although she hasn't smelled as much as I've smelled, nor does she care. But, you know, other than what she smells on me. Um, but it was interesting. She really liked um, 
she really, really liked Zeno. So um, as far as I was going, I was telling that story because of the patchouli story. Both of those have beautiful patchouli notes, but Kiritsi Amud's Womo is much more smoky. It's much more darker, smokier, more animalic than Zeno, but I love them both. Uh, Zeno is much smoother because it has that vanilla dry down. But this is like 4160's Tuesday Shazam is like a fresher take on patchouli. I think there's tangerine and some other things in there. And it's it's okay. It's okay. It's it's not the kind of thing that I would rebuy today if I had to rebuy it, but I don't mind it. But I, I bring Sarah McCartney up because she did the original macaque from 2016. And apparently it had some notes that the new two versions do not have. Like it had honey, galbanum, rosewood, ylang ylang, jasmine tea, green tea, white oud. None of those are in these new, I don't know why I'm pointing at the 4160s bottle, but none of those notes are in these new versions of macaque. So number one, the new versions of macaque is done by a completely different perfumer, totally different. Uh, the woman's name, and she is kind of like a, um, she is sort of like a indie, under the radar perfumer, I guess. And macaque, I think, was one of the things that really put her uh, on the map. And it is a woman, her name is... Mackenzie Riley. Okay, so Mackenzie Riley since uh, Macaque. Actually, she did a couple things before Macaque. She did some uh, fragrances for Sense of Wood. She did Cypress and Oak and Sandalwood and Oak in 2020 and 2021. And then she did a couple Amouages in 2020. She did that Meander fragrance, which I don't like. And she did Ashore by Amouage, A-S-H-O-R-E, which I've never smelled before. So she's done some stuff. Um, but I think macaque was one of the things and the amouages that really helped, uh, elevate her career. And that's something that, uh, one of the guys I was messaging on, uh, Instagram today, um, Dimitri, Dimitri, I was messaging Dimitri on Instagram and he was mentioning that he really likes how Victor Wong allows these, you know, perfumers like DSH, uh, perfumes and a couple of the others that I mentioned recently, uh, to kind of use his brand as like a springboard, you know, and that is a positive thing that I do have to mention. He does give these indie perfumers a chance to shine. However, uh, I'm not going to say that's the last good thing I'll say about these two, but these two fragrances right here are just not kind of my cup of tea, okay? I won't be mean about it. I'm not going to bash it because they're they're nice and they're pleasant. And, you know, whenever I first initially saw there were two, I wondered why. And someone gave me the answer that, you know, maybe they were two submissions and Christopher Chong thought they were good enough. Or sorry, Christopher Chong. I'm now making uh, Victor Wong, Christopher Chong. Uh, you've been promoted, Victor. Uh, but Victor Wong liked them enough to say, you know what, they're both good enough to, um, you know, make their own addition and kind of see which one sells better. And I think that's kind of what he did. He did tell me that the Yuzu edition, the one on my left hand, sells much better than the Fiji Red Apple edition. And we'll maybe talk a little bit about that real quick. But um, the first thing I noticed when you first spray is the differences the different top notes make in the perfume. It the different top notes really change the structure of the fragrance and what the whole thing is about. Interestingly enough, um, you would think, oh, it's just the same fragrance with a different top note. And I think that's pretty much true because the, the heart notes are pretty much the same in both. I don't think there's, I don't think they're different at all. The base notes are also the same. I don't think there's one difference at all. I think it's all in uh, the top. So they both have juniper berry. But the uh, yuzu edition, believe it or not, does have Japanese yuzu, uh, which is a very expensive ingredient, apparently. And it also has mandarin. And the Fiji apple edition, believe it or not, does have Fiji apple in the top. And it has olibanum oil. OK, uh, and so instantly kind of uh, the, the different top notes change the whole complexity of the two fragrances because. For the first couple hours, you're going to notice the difference. And even though they do kind of blend closer and closer to each other as the hours go by, um, the changes in the top notes linger in, in both fragrances, okay? 
So the apple in the Fiji apple seems like a thick, dense, heavy, red, fleshy apple. That's kind of how I would describe it. It's dense and it's sweet. It's almost like the peak ripeness, okay? And it adds to this sensation of weight, okay? So the Yuzu edition, to me, has this weightless uh, sparkle champagne pop, right? It just, it gives off fresh and I see why this one outsells apple. Although the one thing I will say about the apple flanker is that the apple adds this sweetness to it. And so one thought in my mind as I was smelling these two is maybe the general public will call them just Mr. and Mrs. You know, one bottle a year, average perfume consumer, let's say they buy their one bottle a year and that's it, right? Um, maybe I thought the sweetness in the apple edition of Macaque might actually, you know, make it more appealing upon very first spray. That is one thing that obviously maybe it didn't do. And it could be because of that dense thickness. Maybe the, um, you know, maybe the just the, the fleshy thickness of the Apple Note turns some people off because it doesn't just seem as easy to wear as the Yuzu edition. The Yuzu edition is just like, oh, I'm just spraying it on. It's easy. It just pops off your skin. It's, you know sparkly champagne pizzazz fresh you know people that usually are mr and mrs one bottle a year they just want to smell fresh and they just want to smell clean and the yuzu edition does that um the yuzu edition opens up on my skin smelling very bright and dry so it feels kind of bright and dry and it opens up with this sparkle almost like champagne is the way that i in my notes, I mentioned it has this champagne sparkle about it. And um, it yuzu, every time I smell it, no matter what fragrance I smell it in, it always has this sweet and sour aspect to it. So whenever I smell yuzu, I always get the sweet and sour combination. And I get it in Macaque Yuzu Edition as well. So sometimes you smell the perfume and it smells somewhat sweet, nowhere near as sweet as the Apple Edition, but basically sweet. Uh, and sometimes you smell it and it has this sour, bitter feel. And yuzu has that multi-dimensional quality. Japanese yuzu apparently is pretty expensive ingredient. Many uh, of the just, we'll call them designer level houses, uh, don't use yuzu because it's expensive. It's much more expensive than the usual, uh, you know, orange that they're probably getting from Florida or Brazil or one of those cheaper markets are not using the higher end Italian oranges and um, you know here so the citruses is bright sparkly and sometimes it has that sweet and sour aspect and um, you know if you've never smelled it yuzu has this um, has this two-faced smell it smells half the time sweet and half the time sour and half the time with yuzu the other thing it does is half the time you smell the mandarin orange, and there actually is mandarin orange here, but interestingly enough, yuzu as a note itself will sometimes come across smelling slightly like mandarin orange half the time and slightly like this lemony grapefruit half the time. And so the yuzu basically gives it this basically uh, aromatic, fresh vibe, if you will. Uh, and like I said, Victor Wong told me that the yuzu edition far outsells the apple edition okay so if you're someone who just casually enjoys perfume and you like to smell clean and fresh apparently the yuzu edition is the way to go uh and so for the person who isn't a perfume addict uh i would probably think that something like 75 percent of people would probably lean towards the uh, yuzu edition that sparkly freshness just kind of sets them off and I, I i sprayed these on today and i kind of asked my three-year-old daughter as a just as a joke which one do you prefer and she clearly picked the yuzu edition um and so there is something to that um you know both perfumes basically give off this fresh fruity smelling concoction with woods and olibanum that's basically the vibe and i'll read you the little blurb i wonder if the blurb is the same or if they're different um yeah i think the blurb's the same okay let me just read one i'll read the yuzu edition so the blurb on macaque says against the backdrop of a mountainous terrain 
Two communities share a peaceful coexistence, yet despite their proximity, the societies are distinctly unique. Macaques cavort among the trees, grasping with delight at nature's bountiful pleasures. From the quiet solemnity of a nearby temple, their human neighbors regard them, coveting the monkey's playful abandon. The macaques are all but oblivious, sparing only the briefest of curious glances at the pensive faces below, before surrendering once again to their carefree revels. Sweet notes of yuzu dance through the pine forest, welcoming you to zoologist macaque. Incense adds gravity with aromas of hinoki woods and myrrh. The delicate balance between heavy and light results in an austere woody scent with mild hints of creamy sandalwood. And the difference on the apple edition says, sweet notes of Fiji apple dance through a pine forest, welcoming you to zoologist macaque. Incense adds gravity with aromas of hinoki woods and myrrh. The delicate balance between heavy and light results in an austere woody scent with mild hints of creamy sandalwood. So um, the olibanum in here, one thing I should mention is the olibanum is not super smoky. It's not deep. It's not dark. It's not church incense. So yesterday, somebody asked me real quick for a couple incense fragrance recommendations. And I remember I said, Andy Towers Incense Extreme. This is a vintage bottle. That's why it looks like this um, instead of the new tower bottles. And uh, I mentioned Bought on Sans by Armani, probably the best Armani Privé, uh, although it doesn't last very long. If you just want to smell real incense, you know, true Catholic church incense, if you went to Catholic church as a kid like I did, this will take you right back to sitting in the pew as a little kid, um, you know, with your mother not wanting to be there, ready to go home, not understanding why you had to be at church. And um, I think I recommended one more, Healy. Um, Cardinals Healy. And you could even throw in something like, uh, this is a really good incense no one talks about. Zadig and Voltaire, this is him. Nathalie Lorson did uh, to incense with this is him, what she did to vetiver with uh, Encre Noir. In my opinion, if you like the, if you like what she did to Encre Noir or any of the flankers, the vetiver, Zadig and Voltaire, this is him. Uh, is a great incense, but there is a lot of ISOE super and stuff like that in here. And, and you will smell that, but I don't, I don't mind synthetics if they're done well. Nathalie Lorson knows how to do synthetics. So I was thinking about this character, basically this, you know, fruity uh, with the apple on one hand, you know, it adds this slightly sweet. And I will say this about the apple of all the things that I've said the apple here is very red. It's probably one of the reddest apples. Most of the apple notes that you'll smell, like for example, whenever I smell something like um, like Leighton, for example, the apple doesn't feel red and fleshy. It, it usually feels pretty synthetic and green because I think apple is usually built with some accord of a bunch of different notes and um, you know they're not out there using apple essential oil or anything like that. And so uh, the closest apple comparison I've ever smelled to this macaque, I think, if you've ever smelled the really old batches of Aventus, they used to have this apple that was red. And so like 2011, 2012, Aventus had this very red apple note in there. And then it kind of went away as the years went on. But um, I haven't smelled a super red apple that was that well done since the early, early batches of Aventus that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, and this kind of does that. So Brownie points to the Fiji apple edition, if you will. But, uh, you know, I think because of the sweetness in the apple, I think I concur with the masses this case. And if you forced me to pick one, I'd probably pick the Yuzu edition, although I don't know how much I would use it because this type of fresh incense, I was really thinking about it earlier. And I came up with a alternative that I would much prefer. There's a fresh incense that Ariz Ladore did in his History of Atar collection called Mysore Ascenza. And Mysore Ascenza to me is this idea of basically what this fragrance is. 
you know, um, this light wearable olibanum incense, um, but done with higher quality materials and something that I think I would reach for a lot more than um, macaque. Macaque, um, macaque is kind of something at this point I just shrug at. It's not for me. I'm not saying it's bad or it's not well made. It's just, I feel like I've kind of moved past the type of perfume that macaque is. If I wanted a fresh wearable incense, I think I would probably go with something like Mysore uh, Ascenza. This was a very wearable incense, if memory serves, this Mysore Ascenza. Let's see if I can find it again. Ah, yes, here we go. Yeah, uh, aged Indian Mysore sandalwood focused incense composition with an alluring vintage feel. Showcasing the most traditional way of perfuming using smoke, a frankincense, and sandalwood. And um, it said smoky frankincense, but I remember Mysore Ascenza being such a light, wearable incense. You know what I mean? So that's something that just popped into my head as I was thinking about replacements for macaque. So as soon as I sprayed these on my skin today, I was like, oh, man, I made these my scent of the day. You know, it was that kind of feeling, a little let down. Um so again, I love Victor Wong in his work, and I'm not bashing him. It's just, it, that, it's not for me, you know. This kind of fruity, light incense thing is, the, the sandalwood kind of feels synthetic in the base. It's, it's you know, it's, it's okay, but I did want to put my thoughts out there, uh, but you will not be seeing any full bottles of macaque on my um, bench or dresser anytime soon. However... I wouldn't mind trying the original macaque one day just for kicks and giggles from 2016 to see uh, if, you know, the original maybe moved me a little bit more. Um, all right, let me catch up on the comments and then we'll start knocking out our usual routine of four new samples. I'm also loving my Less Up Straits Desandras. It's blossoming off my skin. It's beautiful. Did I go backwards? Tetra Lascala, I must have went backwards, didn't I? Scent of the Night, Gold Man, unpopular opinion, my favorite amouage. It is very, very good. Uh, if you like Gold Man, GMG, I will give you an unpopular opinion and tell you that you need to check out you need to check out this L'Envan Arpege Extray. If you can find a bottle like this, I'm telling you, uh, it is the fragrance that Guy Robea loved the most of all of his, you know, you know, loved old fragrances. This is what moved Guy Robea as a perfumer, this Arpege L'Envan. I completely see why. It's one of my favorite aldehydic florals of all time. Um, it just... It, it's just amazing. It's it's almost jaw dropping. It's so beautiful. Uh, I I have a hard time wearing this as my scent of the day. Like I have to wear it to bed, and you can kind of see the aldehydic floral opening, the animalic, you know, oak mossy, um, woody benzoin. Uh, I I remember there being a lot of uh, balsams in our peach uh, extray. And um, just, it feels like you're smelling multiple fragrances. The top is the, one of the most perfect fruity aldehydic florals you'll ever smell. The mid is one of the most beautiful floral hearts you'll ever smell. The base is one of the most beautiful benzoin woody uh, ambergris. That's another thing. The ambergris in the dry down is one of the best I've ever smelled. So if you like Gold Man and you don't have a bottle of Arpege by Lanvin from 19, the 1920s, it's definitely something to hunt down. You'll see the um, you'll see kind of the uh, skeleton of what really Guy Robert kept trying to recreate over and over and over again. Rachel agrees with you. Wow, multiple people agreeing with you. Gold, their favorite. Amouage. Ah, good evening, Dushan. Let me catch up on these comments. Missoni Womo, I need to wear that soon, Manly Scent. It's on my list, although I keep wearing stuff like this when I should be wearing Missoni Womo. Like the stream for the Dream Team? That's right. Azaro Poroma, beautiful barbershop, Dushan. Not that unpopular, it sounds like, exactly. 
Good evening, Interference. Glad you're here. If you guys have any experience with macaque, I'd love to uh, get your opinion. Maybe I'm the only one who kind of thinks it's eh, so-so. But I definitely wouldn't buy a bottle, I'll tell you that. Parfum Dome Black. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought, Dimitri. Big fish. Hope so, Ram. Never smelled Aramis Devon, but I see that's available at Enchante. Yes, actually, the one Enchante has is, I think, the one that you want to. It's this version. Just um, text Anuj and make sure that it's this version that you're going to get, and you will be happy with it. I'm telling you. Actually, not only will you be happy with it, this is one of the best green sheep rose I've ever smelled. Uh, I would put this right up there with uh, number 19. I know. I know. I'm just telling you. I would put this right up there with number 19 for me as far as like what I love to wear. The galvanum in this is out of this world. Um, and so, yes, if you love Devin or if you love uh, Desandras, I think if you have never smelled Devin, if you smell Devin from 1977, you'll then look upon Desandras with even, even more admiration. You'll be able to see like, you know, Antoine Lee just weaving his... Uh, his web, you know, uh, and and the little homages to the past. I think Antoine Lee's a genius. Ah, Pike in the house. Scent of the day, my new Tom Ford London. New. New. How, how, how long have you had it? You know, I've never smelled that. Uh, there's a bottle I was watching today somewhere for like 250, I think, for 40 mils maybe. I don't know what those go for, and I don't know if that's a good enough deal, but um, Fragrance Net got Furio 20 bucks. Oh, it's a freaking steal, man. Absolute steal. Go for it. I actually recommended the gal that sent me the Amwages, Ali, uh, and actually I left one out. There's an Amwage that didn't get the love with that its other friends got. Um I can't remember. I think it was Mitt's woman. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look through these samples and see if I can uh, find the sample. But uh, she sent me one one emoise that didn't make it onto the emoise testing, so I'll have to do that one separately. But she told me she likes emoise because it's challenging. And I told her if you like challenging scents, go buy Koros and go buy Furio. They're both cheap right now, sort of. She's, um, you know down to try things like that and she wrote me back uh she's had them for a week or two now and she wrote me back and said they're absolute loves so yes furio uh completely unisex i think even eugene who just got acquainted with furio within the last six months or so said he thinks it's uh easily worn by a woman as well oscar de la renta gentlemen the domino bottle i love it mike i love the domino bottle and you know that's one that uh no one talks about that gets no love, none whatsoever, anywhere. Um, I think the Domino bottle deserves much love. This is my second favorite Oscar de la Renta. You know, there was a, um, it's really good. I mean, it's synthetic. It's, it's a fragrance you can buy for 20 bucks. I mean, what you can't expect. You can't expect it to smell like uh, vintage Arpege X-Ray or anything, but um, for what you get, I think this is a great cheapie. If it is still a cheapie, I don't even know if it still is a cheapie or not. All right, let's catch up on these comments, and then we're going to spray. Uh, <laughs> let's start with Panda, because AC from the channel smells good absolutely annihilated panda on one of his videos he put it on one of the worst fra fragrances he hates video uh and he said that panda basically smells like a panda broke into your uh garden did its business just all over and you know you're smelling it right after the panda broke right into your garden and just violated your flowers you know I really like cigar rum, but particularly enjoy Scotch peat when I'm in the mood for a boozy change from pure malt. malt. Scotch peat. I don't think I've smelled Scotch peat. Scotch 
eat. Oh, that's also a stranger's. Okay, interesting. I'll put it on the uh, I'll put it on the wish list. Thanks for the wreck there, my friend. All right, let's get Panda on my skin. And then we'll talk, catch up with the comments and talk about it. Now, this is version 2.0. The first version from 2014 is discontinued. Okay, well, they obviously must have toned it down. Uh, AC from the channel Smells Good must have had the original Panda because this is not challenging at all. You know, it's if it's challenging, it's the slightest amount of earthy notes that I get uh, and the slightest amount of civet, but this is not challenging. There's actually an underlying sweetness uh, it reminds me a little bit in a very strange way, like a weird version of, um, Figment Man, actually. It's the earthy notes, but I much prefer Figment Man. Figment Man is much more daring to me. Uh, maybe the original Panda was also much more daring. Here for the beaver and macaque. Bring on the goodness, Ramsey. Scent of the night, Gucci Poron. Well done, Donnie. Well done. The iris to fat. That's right. Now that they've proven themselves, time for Remy and Antoine to land the biggest fish of all, Max Fortnite. <laughs> oh, man. Could you imagine? Macaque is our monkey cousin. That's right. Sent to the day. Cruz del Sur one. Never smelled it. AD80. Never smelled it. The parfum when I bought it was like 1400 for 30 mils. Oh, that's pain, Rachel. That is serious pain. Today is a good day. Just bought an unused 30 mil Samsara X-ray in the rare all gold 90s bottle. Stole it. Where do you find these? Seriously, can I like put you on the payroll and you can just find stuff for me? Where are you finding these, Andy? <clears throat> the new EDP will be around 300 if I'm remembering right. Don't take my word for it. That's still much more affordable than 1400. Um, that's uh, much more affordable. Since the day, Epic Man, uh, a beauty, Arbaz. I've been eyeing wearing that again. I love Epic Man. I love just wearing my amboises. Again, that's one of the downsides of having a channel is you're doing stuff like this uh, for the community instead of really wearing what you love. And, and I will say that is 100% one of the downsides. It's cool testing out all the new stuff, but sometimes I just want to be like, leave me alone. I just want to wear Epic Man, you know. Now looking for a full bottle, yes. 265 euros for IDF EDP. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, Rachel. They, they did that one right. 4160 Tuesdays. I like that name. You like that name. Why? I was thinking how much I hate the name. Like what? 4160 Tuesdays. What the hell does that even mean? I'm sure someone will now type up a dissertation telling me exactly what it means. Hey, Lynn. Good to see you. Good to see you, little lady. Glad you're here. Fifth. FIFA is like damn Ifra's Karama. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good evening, Lynn. Dushan is the uh, professional greeter. Interesting because Sarah is very independent. She does see Ifra as an advocate for the perfumer's palate, including naturals against regulators like EU. I, yeah, she told me that too. She told me that as well. Well, all of those, all of those, whatever the regulators are, I don't agree with any of them. I don't think the EU should be able to tell, you know, the perfume, the perfume or the house, how much oak moss they should have in there or whether they can use linalol or, I mean, unless it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure someone will say, but they're protecting humanity. And, and I, I mean, I would rather just see some sort of a disclaimer. Hey, 
this product has this, which could cause a rash or, you know, what, I mean, they sell cigarettes for God's sakes, you know, if they can sell cigarettes, they can surely sell a perfume with a disclaimer on it. But I digress. I've never smelled any McCartney fragrances, but her YouTube channel is very informative. Okay, I'll have to check it out. I've never seen her own channel. i found personally, the more one learns about materials and regulations, the more complex it gets. Yes, I know what you mean, but I think that they've made it that way. It's almost like the tax code, you know, like the tax code is complex, but the big boys have enough money and firepower to pay people who know how to get around it. You know what I mean? Um, and that's kind of how I feel like they've made some of those regulations. Agreed about Moods Womo. It's amazing. Oh, I love that stuff. McCartney should let the ingredients be. Yes. Stop it, McCartney. Let it be. It's like learning the quantum physics. Damn quantum physics. Hi, all. Nice to see the usual suspects. Dedicated Greeter, Dushan, good day to you too. Scent of the day, Bortnikov, mysterious oud. I get a very strong sandalwood note next to the oud. Yes, sandalwood and a lot of amber, if memory serves. Um, it's almost like a oud. It's almost like a oud uh, oriental, like an oriental oud. Mysterious oud with strong sandalwood. Good vibes indeed. Ah, good evening, Anuj. Perfume peeps. Welcome, my brother. Best yuzu I've experienced is the long discontinued Isimiyaki Purim yuzu edition flanker. Is that the one that robes 08 like gushes over? I've never smelled any of those uh, yuzu flankers. That's really interesting what you say. I think that says a lot about the quality of zoologists as a house. They are all good frags down to your preference. Yes, it's down to your preference for sure. They're good frags. The materials are good. Um, beaver, I think if if I think if I had never smelled this, because this is the thing that's really kind of catching my attention as far as beaver goes, because I'm getting a lot of the same uh, earthy aroma chemicals that feel like they were used in Figment Man, but Figment Man just goes so much heavier on the. Um, uh, on, on the animalics in the opening. So you get a ton of civet. And this feels like a modern day Koros, not in the way it smells, but in just how ballsy it is. Koros was such a ballsy release, you know? And Figment Man feels that way. And Panda feels like this is trying to be nicer. Like maybe if you kind of like the concept of Figment Man, but you can't stand that animalic civet, you don't want to wait hours for it to dry down and be okay to be around people, panda might be for you. Here, let's read the blurb. An encounter with a lovable panda is as unforgettable as the exotic forest it calls home. Like the majestic mosaic of dewy greens and enchanting aromas of florals and fruits, this creature exudes a vibrance as light and playful as a Sichuan breeze. Sichuan pepper. The opening of this oriental fragrance envelops you in a joyous embrace. Osmanthus, magnolia, lily, and juicy apple tumble over one another in a happy melee to create a moment of pure joy. As the scent gently settles, you find yourself meandering through a shadowy corridor of bamboo where subtle hints of jasmine, amber, and musks peek out from behind fresh green leaves, lending you to a tranquil oasis. In the quiet calm, a carefree exuberance rolls over you, lifting your spirits to a magical place where pandas roam and play. Top notes, apple, magnolia, mandarin, lily, osmanthus, ozone, and tea. Heart notes, amber, earthy notes, jasmine, orris, and patchouli. Base of civet, musk, sandalwood, and vanilla. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of the earthy notes coming through still. Maybe because I've, my brain has like made the connection with uh, Figment Man now. But there are more fruity notes here. I'll tell you that. So 
It could be the Osmanthus because there's no Osmanthus in um, Figment Man. But Osmanthus, as you guys know, uh, gives off this apricot, leathery apricot, slightly animalic vibe. And um, in, in, uh, in Panda, there is also that apple note. Um, and there is a bamboo note, which... I've smelled bamboo because they actually have real bamboo at the uh, Fort Worth Zoo. And so I've smelled bamboo. I don't know if that's the same bamboo that you get, uh, you know, where the pandas live on the other side of the world. Uh, but I have smelled it before. I can't say I'm getting a bamboo note yet. But I am getting something slightly green and earthy. Uh, probably the patchouli is also adding to that earthy greenness as well. So it's okay, but my brain keeps going back to this um, this link between Figment Man. Have you guys smelled Panda? Hey, Allie, glad you're here. I was just talking about you. So glad you like Furio and, um, and Koros. Now you have to go get Antaeus, and I told her next is Antaeus, Givenchy Gentleman uh, from 1974, EDT. Hello, my friend. Nothing today. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, you go back and forth, Anuj. Sometimes you wear you wear the fragrances and sometimes you don't. I'm such a routine person. Like if I didn't put perfume on, I would I would feel like my world was like my world was collapsing. Like something's wrong. Maybe you've already discussed it. I don't own any zoologists. I'd like to, but too often when I check, there's two entries. Different perfumers, different notes, pretty confusing and uninviting. So, okay, that's a good point, GMG. So, uh, like, for example, Panda is one of those two entries. So if you go to um, Parfumo, Parfumo makes it actually really easy to tell the two because if you type Panda, it'll say Panda 2014. It'll say Panda... 2017 and so what ended up happening is uh they issued panda in 2014 and then i guess maybe there was some sort of a uh discontinuation of an ingredient or maybe it just wasn't received well enough because originally the perfumer of panda was the same perfumer as rhinoceros that paul killer so Paul Killer did Panda and he did Rhinoceros. Both of those are discontinued in the original format. Then they were reworked. Uh, Rhinoceros was reworked by Pren Lomros, if memory serves, and Panda was reworked by Christian Carbonell, Chris Maurice, one of, uh, actually, I think that's one of Rachel's favorite perfumers. And uh, so this is a good fragrance. It's not that it's bad. It's almost like a more sweet. There's some sort of sweetness added to it from somewhere. The sweetness um, feels like a more mass appealing version of Figment Man. So for me, I, I would go for the more um, challenging fragrance. Also, I feel like the ingredients are of higher quality in the amouage. Maybe it's just because I'm biased towards old amouages, but I do feel like the ingredients seem a little higher quality, but this is good. This is very good. I would I would wear this. Send to the day the great Furio and have two bottles backed up already. Can't beat 18 bucks. Congrats, Allie. I'm glad. I'm glad you love it. Um, there's a lot of uh, vintage masculines that I think you'll find are surprisingly not just unisex, but maybe some of them even lean feminine. I'm going to make a recommendation to you. Um, here's one for you to go hunt down. It's a vintage masculine. But it was made in the 80s. In the late 80s, it was very popular for fragrance houses to um, use a lot of pissy animalic florals and stick them in masculine perfume. So this is Paco Rabanne uh, Tenere. Paco Rabanne Tenere. T-E-N-E-R-E. -E. Rest in peace. Uh, the great Paco Rabanne, whose name I wrote down. It is uh, Francisco Robanetta. 
So rest in peace, Francisco. Uh, but yes, Paco Rabanne Tenere is one that I would highly recommend checking out if you're enjoying Furio and if you're enjoying uh, Koros. So yes, discontinued like Furio, but you can still find bottles floating around. Okay, let's catch up on some of these comments. Ramsey, reading the blurbs reminds me of deep thoughts from the old Saturday Night Live era. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Zadig Rock and Roll scent. Never smelled it, Dushan. Chat, Mike V, those deep thoughts were legendary. Yes, they were. Yes, they were indeed. Welcome, Eugene. I can get some. Just let me know. Sometimes on oud wood, sometimes sandalwood. They sure were. Good old Jack Hanley. Ah, the good old days. You'd have fit right in there, Mike V. A lot of positive feedback on the new Zaharoff leather tabak. Thanks for that, RP Rentals. Uh, I don't, uh, I have never smelled any of those Zaharoff uh, fragrances at all. I think maybe I sprayed my sample of Signature once, but I can't remember it. I have to do a video on it. I've got probably a mill or so left, so enough to do kind of an early impression style like this. I think from memory, the biggest thing is that sweetness. Something in Panda um, the vanilla, obviously. It must be the vanilla. There's vanilla in Panda. Uh, there's no vanilla in... There's no vanilla in uh, Figment Man. Yeah, but, uh, Figment Man's more uh, animalic notes, labdanum, guyac wood, earthy notes, vetiver, sandalwood, geranium. Panda has the addition of osmanthus, tea, orris, patchouli, uh, vanilla. So you can kind of see the, it's, to me, it's a little sweeter, easier to wear version of Figment Man is how I would um, describe it. But actually, Panda came first. And actually, both Figment and, pa and Panda, the one I'm talking about, came out in 2017. And so the fact that they both smell like they're using similar molecules, I feel like sometimes these big oil houses have these like molecules of the year because sometimes I swear some of these fragrances from the same year come across smelling very similar. But the original Panda came out in 2014, but it's a completely different note tree. It's citron, it keeps the bamboo, it adds Sichuan pepper, it keeps the tea, uh, orange, shisho leaf, which is uh, different, keeps the osmanthus, adds orange blossom, adds lily, adds mimosa, adds frankincense, uh, keeps the sandalwood, adds cedar, keeps the musk, adds vetiver, adds Pemua root. I don't know what that is. Adds bourbon whiskey. So there was also that whiskey note in um, Rhinoceros. So this Paul Killer guy, he definitely likes the whiskey and uh, moss. So yeah, there's no oak moss in the new Panda as well. So there's definitely changes. Christian Carbonell definitely changed the fragrance. Talking to fragrance houses, perfumers about their discontinued fragrances, like asking a magician to play their old number one hit when they're promoting a new album. Yes, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Would love to see a Jack Henley, Mr. Canoe Head collab. Yes, that's right. If Antoine Lee is a sad man, then he is a genius. Yeah, the one recently got for 70. It's like an animalic, more dirty tobacco and oud, in my opinion. Love it. Nice. Scent of the day, Dries Van Naughton Voodoo Chili. You've been on that, Kenzo. I've never smelled any of those Dries Van Naughtons. What are they like? Are they good? Is the quality good? Eugene, what about Antoine Lee and Bertrand Ducher for Cola? Oh, my God. That would be like, that would be amazing. I don't think they would, I don't think those perfumers would like to work together, though. They like to do their own thing, I feel like. Hyrax Zoologist and Tom Ford. London, pretty similar, really. Who was wearing London today? Was that you, Pike? Uh, if you were wearing London, let me know. Do you agree with that? I've never smelled Tom Ford London, but I have Hyrax. 
and I like it. I don't love it. Yeah, I don't see those type of colags often for sure. Panda doesn't smell on eucalyptus. That's a good shout. That's a very good shout. You're right. No, no eucalyptus. It's more earthy. More earthy and green. Bamboo. Would love to see Toonsies the driving cat take Chad's bus out for a spin. <laughs> uh, good old Chad's bus. Wearing four sprays, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. And my construction worker friends still telling me I am blasting them with my perfume. Uh, tell them to man up. Especially if they're construction workers. You know, they're outside in the sun all day. They can't be smelling you from that far away. Just picked up Aramis Etruscan. Ah, that's the original. Etruscan is the... Etruscan is the original version of um, Tuscany per Uomo, isn't it? I've never smelled the Etruscan version, but is it supposed to be close to the vintage version, uh, Keith? Is it supposed to be close? I assume it is, isn't it? Or did they do a good job keeping it close? Let's put it that way. Or is it completely different? I own Tom Ford London. Not too impressed, to be honest. Notes say big and scary. Reality, we can tame a bit of dirt, but nothing much more. I found that uh, is true with a lot of Tom Fords. Robes 08. Uh, I wonder if he's here. I haven't, I'm probably way behind on the comments, but Mark was saying he picked up a Tom Ford called Musk. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to look this up. Musk. Musk Pure? No, Ur is it? It might have been Urban Musk. I think he picked up Urban Musk. And uh, he was saying that it's it's discontinued. But he was saying that uh, many people were saying how challenging it is and all this stuff. And then he gets it and he's like, this is not that challenging for me at all. Uh, so, yeah, I found that with a lot of Tom Ford's palace. Ah, Bry's in the house. Shout out to Bry. Glad you're here, my friend. Granted, old, grumpy, alcoholic, jackass men are not the target demographic, but still surprised how much they can smell fragrances and tease me for it. <laughs> oh, that is pretty funny. Something here smells of Zonka. Sarah is just wrong. You know, I, uh, I just don't side with that whole if... Uh, we're actually saving things. Trust us mentality. I'm sorry. I just don't. In my experience, the only way to get some good deals is buying from untrusted sellers. Just got another silver cap and Teus today for $50. It's a bit like gambling, but it works most of the time. Wow. You found a silver sprayer and Teus for 50 bucks. Dude, you guys are making me jealous. I feel like I'm overpaying on everything I bought. Sure, it's better Zonka than Mer and Tonka. <laughs> Something I love about zoologists is that even when they aren't challenging per se, zoologists frags are still proper, respectable, beautiful frags, not sugar bombs. Yes. Although there is something sweet about this. Rachel, have you smelled Panda, the new one from Christian Carbonell, 2017 version? Uh, I think you might really like this. I know you love Christian Carbonell, don't you? Then to the day, Old Magnolia from F Mall. I've never smelled that, believe it or not. I know, shocking. I know. Tom Ford London was reformulated like so many were, just like new and old. Tuscan leather is night and day. All depends on your batch code. Ouch. Beaver is one, one lake feel for me. Beaver is uh, coming up. Should I save that one for last? Let's see what we've got. So we did Panda. Let's see Beaver. Beaver was also originally issued in 2014 by Chris Bartlett. It was then redone by Chris Bartlett a couple years later in 2016. 
So originally it was linden blossom, aracord, musk, citrus notes, castorium, iris, vanilla, smoke, capice, musk, ash tree, cedar, and amber. Now it's green notes, linden blossom, aracord, woody notes, more aracord, musk, dry woods, aquatic notes, amber, castorium, dark woods, leather, musk, and vanilla. All right, let's do beaver. We're talking about it. All right, so let me jot this down. So left wrist. Come on, pen. Always when you need it. There we go. Left wrist is the good old panda. Right wrist, we've got beaver. Let's put the beaver on the wrist. Let's do this. God, I hate these sprayers. Oh, ah, that's interesting. I like the uh, I like the contrast of fresh woody and it has castorium. I mean, you put castorium in a fragrance, and I am pretty much there. I like that. I definitely like it more than Panda, I'll tell you that. Um, it's like a strange castorium in water. Um, man, if this went in the vetiver, like if this went heavy into the vetiver dry down, this could be in the, in the ballpark of Kinski by Kinski instead. This goes more into like this dark, smoky woods. You know what it smells like? It smells like a crazy blend of a few pieces of Kinski Kinski, but mostly mixed with that charred wood accord that I smelled in Corpus Equus by uh, Naomi Goodser. If you've smelled Corpus Equus, it has that very deep, dark, rich, smoked wood. And that's the type of wood that I'm getting in beaver. It smells like smoked, dark woods. I think I like the opening more than what I what it's turning into. Yeah, I don't like I don't like the way it's going. I like the opening. Uh, the first minute or two was great, but now it's turning into this. I mean, look at this note listing: green notes, woody notes, dry woods. Aquatic notes, air accords, dark woods. I mean, that's some pretty vague note listing. Let's see what it actually says. Story time with Ramsey. Zoologist Beaver invites you to slip away to a cozy family lodge. A tranquil river encloses the den in its rippling embrace as it glides beneath the blossoms of lush linden trees lining the barks. The breezy aroma of the green floral grove washes over you just before you duck inside to be welcomed by leathery hints of musky castorium. As it mingles with the moist woody notes of freshly honed timber, it strikes you just how sexy and dapper this perfume is, and you sink into it, letting yourself be enfolded in its surprising elegance. Top notes of fresh outdoor air, linden blossom, wood shavings, and wild vegetation. Heart notes of damp air, dry wood, light musk, and water. Base of amber, leather, castorium, dark woods, Heavy musk and vanilla. I don't know how I feel about beaver. I really like the first couple minutes. I don't really like what it's turning into. It Rich Mitch would lose his mind. Did he smell beaver on skin? Did did is this one of the ones Rich Mitch put on skin? This is like hitting me like a giant amber wood accord for that dark woods. I really don't like where it's going. No, that's not for me. 
I think I like Panda even more, actually. Hello, Ramsey. Scent of the day. Citron Noir. Never smelled it. Have you seen ridiculous price increases on fragrance like Chanel? I'd like to add more or less exclusives to my collection, but at this rate, I'm fine with what I have. I 100% agree with you, Pat. 100%. They are out of their minds with where they're going with those price increases. As a lady, I prefer to never use bad language, but fuck those regulators and save our art. That's right. Sometimes it must be said. Intangible cultural heritage. Yep. Andy, batch code of my London A25 in gold. Is it too new? Ah, it's in gold, so it's an older one. Rachel is in Beethoven's mode. That's right. But I really do think Sarah understands the situation and has the right thing at heart. I think she might have the right thing at heart, but she's not going to change the system from in IFRA. You know, in IFRA, she's just part of the system. I mean, it's, uh, it, I mean, I guess it's nothing we can either, we can do either to change it sitting here bitching about it. The only time it's going to change is when we stop buying their shit. That's it. When people stop buying fucking Dylan Blue and Versace Eros, when they literally stop buying those, when it stops making them money. You know, that's the reason most perfumes get discontinued is because they don't sell it, it many times. It has nothing to do with the ingredients or, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, ban from IFRA or anything like that. Uh, a lot of times it's just the ones that don't sell gets the ax. And so as long as the perfumers are out there buying the shit that the oil houses can produce for two dollars. They're not going to make fragrances that cost them 15 bucks to make with real naturals. And, you know, it's just, um, it's a, it's a terrible situation that we're in as a perfume for the new perfume coming out. However, brands like Les Abstraits give us hope. Number one, number two, we're in a very interesting time. Well, imagine how lucky you are as a perfume lover to live now rather than in 30 or 40 years. Can you imagine someone in 30 years trying to find a bottle of Balenciaga Pour Homme? Could you imagine what this is going to go for in 30 years? I mean, you know, it's... Uh, so I guess in the grand scheme of things, we have to count ourselves as... We have to count our lucky stars that... You live in a world where you can still go get vintage Balenciaga Pour Homme and vintage Antaeus and vintage Coros and vintage Leonard Pour Homme and all the stuff you like. Vintage Chanel Egoist Cologne Concentre, huh? You know, stuff like that. It's, um, we're lucky. We're decades, 30, 40 years removed, not 80, 100 years removed. I really don't like where Beaver went. Like it started out with so much promise, amazing promise. I was ready to say, oh, Beaver just took the top spot. Nope, not at all. I'm back to uh, Panda being number one, which is not what I expected. Panda is like an overripe apple in mud and cornstarch. Huh, that's an interesting take, Dimitri. Pat, at Chanel's EDP price increase rate, they will soon overtake the discontinued EDT prices. <laughs> 2160 Tuesdays is an 80-year span. Okay, I figured someone was going to tell me what it was. Panda is a smash hit in the Middle East country. Stores would order 50 bottles of Panda in one or two other zoologists' sense. Congratulations, Victor. Glad to hear that. Chanel, the prices are still the same here. 460 for 200 mil. It's the EU regulators who don't understand the art. Well, they're just... I mean, the whole situation with the EU cosmetics authority is insane. And of course, the brands can't just tell them to fuck off because... They have to sell their stuff in France and, you know, Germany and um, Poland and all those places they have to sell. So has Ram tried OG Beaver? Is this a trap? 
Uh, I have not tried the OG Beaver from 2014. Eugene, no. Uh, I've only tried the version 2.0. I've only tried the improved Beaver, the new and improved. The cultural sensora of different cultures is fascinating. It is. Hello, Saeed. Welcome, my friend. Panda is designed by Christian Carbonell, and he designed 95% of Zerzhov perfumes. Yeah. Can't say I'm the biggest fan of Zerzhov. Been taking a lot of pics of my zoologist bottles lately, thinking of how to talk about them on my Instagram. Ram, you're inspiring me. Their bottles are beautiful, to be fair. Um, I really like what he did with the bottles, and I really like the concept. Uh, and I really like the, uh, artwork of the, of the, um, animals. So yes, I'm, and if you, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a slant to the bottle. So it's a good little design. Uh, there's leather, there's actual leather, or it feels like leather. Maybe it's pleather, but it feels like leather around the outside. It feels soft for your fingers. Uh, and there's the zoologist you know, Z emblem on the, uh, on the cap. So yes, it's a good, it's a good bottle. They, they photograph well. Um, now outside of moth, the only one that I've come across so far that has made me go, Ooh, that really makes me want to buy a full bottle of sacred scarab. Uh, so far now, maybe it'll be sloth. Or maybe it'll be Chipmunk, but so far, Sacred Scarab's the only one, and I have 10 mils of it that I've come across that really makes me go, I'm sure he has, but let's get back to talking about zoologists. Didn't know you were airing, Bosman. We need you. We need you in your seat, bright and early. Make sure your backpack's on the floor. Put your hands on the desk and pay close attention. We will make you a fraghead after all. Hey, Paroli. Welcome, brother. I guess Christian had much more fun creating Panda XJs are all so, so stiff and alike. <laughs> I was just watching JJ's review of Bella Me. Bell Am or Bella Me? 4160 Tuesdays are an 80 year old lifespan. Good evening, sir, Bosman. First thing I see joining the stream is one of the best masculine florals of all time. Ah, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about um, Paco Rabanne Tanate. It is one of the best masculine florals. I was recommending this to Allie because uh, she likes challenging fragrances and she bought Furio and she bought Koros and she loved them both. And so I said, this is your next target. This is, and uh, what else did I tell you to buy, Allie? Oh, Givenchy Gentleman EDT. <laughs> you can have fun with those. From 1974. Try to find a vintage. That's right. Bosman's back. Maurice Roussel. Not this guy who does good work. Do Carbonell outsource their ingredients? Ah, that's a good question, Dimitri. So do perfumers like uh, Christian Carbonell when they make their fragrances, I think what Dimitri is asking, uh, Victor, is do they also use their own ingredients, like from their own, if they have their own, you know, um, fragrance company, or I know like uh, Antoine Lee and Remy kind of team up. So does Christian Carbonell kind of bring his own ingredients to the table? Or do you provide those, Victor? Since the day, this is a sample of Amwaj's search. Is it just me or is this the most linear scent ever? Like it literally smells the exact same. I didn't think it smelled exactly the same, but I didn't think it was very good. Um yeah, I've got an early impression. I've got a live stream where I actually tried all four of those new Amwages, the two men's and the two women's, and I was very disappointed. Carbonell has their own oud farm and grow other ingredients, but sometimes they use other companies' materials. Okay. 
Cool. Thanks for that, Victor. Fascinating. Koalas chew eucalyptus, not pandas. <laughs> Correct, Boz. I know everything about the Etruscans, ancient people of Italy. You know, I'm, I'm uh, listening to a podcast right now called uh, The History of Rome, and it's very, very good, Boz. Are you related to Dave Ramsey, the money guy? No. I'm also not related to Ramsey, the chef guy. Francesca Bianchi knows their water. Etruscan. I heard good things about it. What's up, Ace of Souls? Welcome to the stream, my friend. Today I did an experiment. Oh, God. Yep, vintage Tuscany per Womo should be close to the OG Etruscan. I've only smelled the latest version of Tuscany, so it's a win-win no matter what. Nice. Oh, Eric, dude. Stay out of here with questions like that, man. That'll, 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 uh, we could debate that for hours. Because Tuscany was named after Etruscans. Etruscany. The memoir that I had recently bought was the new formulation. Today I went on Mercari and found someone selling a vintage bottle with the name under the cap. Costs almost exactly the same. Good move. In return, the new one that you bought. But one thing I will say is make sure you bought that from a reputable source because I have seen some fake amouages pop up on Mercari. Just word to the wise, just be very careful. Make sure you're not buying it from someone who has zero reviews or you know has never sold anything on Mercari. Those are big red flags. Try to stick with someone reputable. Um, and you got to kind of know what to look for is the only thing. So just be careful. If you get it and it seems completely off, you might have bought a fake. Oh, I just said stay. And then you hit me with that, Ace of Souls. Uh, I mean, it doesn't mean it's fake. But if you want, send me, email me pictures and I'll look it over for you. My email is in the description of all my videos. Do you have a Dave Ramsey fan? Oh, yes, that's right. They are both a fairy tale fragrance. They're, they're amazing. They are verified, but it's my first attempt at buying a vintage bottle for science. Looking forward to comparing the two and hopefully it's legit. Yeah, hopefully it's legit indeed. To me, there's a common theme between London, non-bond, leather oud. They all share a common base. I don't think I've ever smelled non-bon, and I know I've never smelled London. Let's see. What is non-bon? Non-bon. Oh, it's an artiste? I still haven't smelled anything from this brand. I'm ignorant. But I think I have a decant of non-bon lying around. Parfumo tells me I do. It must be true. We used his plan to get our finances right early in our marriage. It works. Nice. I got a sample of Dunhill EDT from a news. Nice. That's the old one. I've never smelled the old one. Yes, but don't listen. Yes, but I don't listen to him. I'd rather listen to Ramsey. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, he may save you money, but I will make sure that uh, your nose is the happiest nose on the block. This ram is way better. I love ancient history too. I used to want to be a historian until I kind of went, how am I going to make any money? I'm not going to write a book and I don't want to be a teacher. So I'm out. So you like Sheep or Palatine? I keep sniffing my one mil sample. I have the EDT coming of Shalimar. Mm. Any version of Shalimar is amazing. I've got the uh, vintage EDT. This came from Duck's house. This came from the duck den. And this is an old, old bottle of Shalimar EDT. It's absolutely amazing. Just every time I see it or hold it, I want to spray it. It's that good. Whoops. 97 mil. Look at that. Just a thing of beauty. Yeah, this beaver is like um, 
the harsh, that harsh, woody, dark, burnt wood note reminds me so much of Corpus Equus. It's insane. All right, let's get sloth on my wrist. Is it so are we gonna do sloth next or chipmunk? Let's do sloth. Sloth came out in 2020. It's a Prin Lamras. Okay. More time to test Prin. Here we go. Let me get this on the old skin. The old skin a roo. Oh, these samples suck. Ooh, I like that. Earthy, spicy, honeyed. Ooh, but it's got that prin. See, this is the thing. This is one of the things that I had a problem with on Tamara. So prin uses this, um, prin uses this like spice cocktail in on Tamara. And I mentioned uh, it in that review, you'd have to go rewatch it to the person who was like, why don't you like Prin? And I really don't like the way that that spice cocktail smell. I've smelled it in a couple of his fragrances and I just smelled it again. I really don't like the way he does the spices. I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy that at all. Like that is, uh, that is really not pleasant to me. It's uh, really harsh. It's like a, it's as if you're smelling this overdosed spice cocktail with like way too much allspice and turmeric and, you know, stuff like that that you usually don't find in perfume. It's just like a harsh spice cocktail. Women had equal standing in their society. Uh, the Romans. Yes, that's right. I ordered almost the whole zoologist's house within two days and six showers. I sampled through all 31 sniffings for hours. Nice. Ah, uh, Rachel has a... Uh... Rachel has a sample of Panda. Awesome. Let me know what you think of it, Rachel. So I think once uh, Sloth calms down, I'll like it more than Beaver, I think. But the problem is, is getting to that calm down point, because right now it's pretty rough still. Yeah, the, the spices are starting to slowly rescind. There was a, um, there was a, a Rige La Dore creation, too, that he thought I would really like but I actually did not like it all. It was called uh, Oud Picante. And Oud Picante had this very similar, um, very uh, strong combination of like cardamom, cumin, spices, turmeric, um, you know, nutmeg, all kind of stuff with spikenard and carrot seed and oud and coffee and all this stuff, costas wood, mahuhu wood, excuse me, and it bothered me. And I didn't like that spice cocktail. And I smelled it again in Prin's work on his higher end brand, which I think is just called Prin. And when I tested Anthamara, I was like instantly taken back to that spice cocktail from oud picante. And now I got it again, but not as harsh and sloth. And it's starting to calm down a little bit, but it's still there. That really bothers me. Uh, I don't like it. Let's read the blurb. With its vibrant sun-dappled hues, the dense rainforest beckons invitingly. Yet within its misty depths, countless dangers lurk. Sorry, it's dark in here. I'm having a hard time seeing this. Um, Slinking across the forest floor, dangling high among the treetops may seem a dubious defense against peril, but for leisurely sloths, the forest canopy offers a protective shroud safe in their leafy forests, sorry, safe in their leafy fortress. The sluggish creatures move so slowly, even moss overtakes them. They snooze in a cradle of moist green aromas oblivious to the chaos below. 
Zoologist Sloth captures the tranquility of this sleepy beast in a soothing green essence. As it settles on the skin, Sloth carries one Sloth carries one up to a place where stresses simply tumble away. See, I don't think this is um, tranquil at all. I don't think this is tranquility at all. This just smells like Prin made one of his usual creations and they just put the name Sloth on it. Um, to me, chamomile, acai berry. That's an interesting note, acai berry. I like SIA juice. I get a little bit of it. Yeah. Now that it's mentioned, yeah. Lavender, violet leaf, magnolia. Sorry, marigold, not magnolia. Beeswax, anise, jatamansi. What is jatamansi? Jatamansi. Is that spikenard? That's the same thing that was in Oud Picante. I didn't like spikenard. And cumin. See, it's a very similar cocktail. Spike nard, cumin, cardamom, all these spices I didn't like. I usually love cardamom and cumin, but I did not like the way they were blended in oud picante. And I got a very similar feel here. And there's also spike nard in them both. Very interesting. Base of hay, frankincense, myrrh, mushroom, oak moss, vanilla, and tonka. I bet you I'll enjoy the dry down of sloth. It's already getting better. And uh, Parfumo calls it an earthy, fruity fragrance. Um, that mushroom hay frankincense thing in the base, I don't know how that's going to all play together. His fragrances feel like even this would remind me very much of Anthamara. You know, they, they feel very similar. Like he doesn't put enough time differentiating his fragrances to me. Someone was asking me why I'm not a big Prin Lomros fan. Like I love Aris Ladore, Russian Adam, and uh, I'm starting to really fall in love with Ansar slowly, slowly, but surely. Uh, his fragrances are too expensive to fall in love with too fast. Uh, and I really like Dmitry Bortnikov, but Prin is like that odd man out for me. He's not, I just... I don't know. Rachel, good idea. Would Medusa be considered an animal? I thought bottles. Platinum Ego East. Uh, my least favorite Ego East. We better slow down so Ramsey can catch up. All right, let me catch up on the comments. Two mil samples. Then I just gave them all to my dad. He tried to sell them on Mercari, but no. <laughs> I would love a fragrance so challenging it turns people around me to stone. Yes, that would be good. Eric Shalimar's brilliant vanilla sheep or palatine, a smell of fresh flowers from garden until the heavy balsam start in the base. They're both amazing. I mean, they're two of my favorite fragrances of all time. Shall, if you made me pick one, I'd probably pick Shalimar just because of what this fragrance means to me. This fragrance means more like as a personal uh, fragrance to me because this fragrance completely opened my mind to the other half of the world that I was ignoring. And once I really discovered Shalimar, whatever it was, three or four years ago, I completely opened up to, you know, the world of women's perfumes. I just completely ignored them because they were women's. Men didn't wear women's fragrances, right? And this fragrance opened that door for me. Uh, and so, Shalimar is one of the most special fragrances in my journey as far as like personally for me. Plus, I love wearing it and I've never smelled a better vanilla oriental ever. You know, this is my favorite vanilla fragrance of all time. Every time I wear it, I feel like I'm wearing some, you know, secret, like I'm part of a secret society and only I know about it. You know what I mean? I went over all of them and am now on 11 bottles. That's right. I saw your bottle collection, Dimitri. You sent it to me today. You, you've got a heck of a zoologist bottle collection, my friend. M. Night Shyamalan. 
Dior Leather Oud. Can't believe they discontinued this. Good thing I got a 250 mil. I know. I love Leather Oud. I love a vintage. People buying Dylan Blue isn't ever going to end. Most kids just want to smell good. This is a very small corner of our world. You're right. You're right. Damn, Ramsey is really axing Versace. Versace, Dylan Blue sucks, dude. There's no getting around that. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, uh, I will bash fragrances. Unlike some reviewers that only give happy reviews, I, I believe a review, in order for it to be more than an infomercial, you have to have both sides of the coin. There has to be some good and some bad. It can't be all good, you know. And if it's all bad, you're just an asshole. And what's the point of being in the hobby? You have to find stuff you love as well. Yeah, Sloth is getting better. I think Sloth is going to be my second favorite. I just really don't like the Amber Woods and Beaver. I don't like that charred wood accord. Whatever they use, I don't like it. You have more bottles of Zoo than I have Amouage. <laughs> Dylan Blue isn't even the worst of them. Blue to Chanel. Uh, Boz, dude, D Dylan Blue is not better than Blue to Chanel. Like, that's not even close. If you forced me to pick one, I would pick Blue to Chanel Eau de Parfum. Um, Dylan Blue is one of the worst things I've ever smelled. There's still a ton of good fragrances made today. They are just harder to find because of the sheer number. You're exactly right, Paroli. You're spot on diving through the haystack to find that needle today is harder than ever because you have to smell so much shit. You know, you have to smell so much shite to get to the good stuff. What can I say? I'm a zoo fanboy. More good fragrances coming out than my wallet can handle at least. That's good. That's a good problem. <laughs> Mike V agrees. Blue to Chanel, throw that Chanel. When you love it, you love it. I like some, but didn't love them, so I decided against any bottles for now. Yeah, I probably won't be getting any full bottles unless some of these at the end really move me. Um, maybe I would get a bottle of Sacred Scarab, but that's still, I'm, I'm on the fence. I, I wouldn't mind trying the new Tiger. 915 GN. I don't think I've ever seen you in the chat before. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Never tried any zoologist. What do you recommend? I do like something animalic leathers or civet in Roja La Nuit 3. Got samples of Interlude Man and Jubilation 25 coming. Nice. Congratulations. Those are awesome. Those are two of my favorites of all time. Um, what do I recommend trying from zoologist? The ones that I really liked. Uh, elephant was good. Um, rhinoceros is the one that had that leather uh, whiskey or whatever it was, liquor, but I didn't really like the new rhinoceros. I'm going to do a comparison to the vintage rhinoceros one day soon. Um, and let's see, what other zoologist? Oh, I would recommend trying um, camel. Camel's really good. Uh, you can try civet, but it's not animalic civet. I did a video on civet. You can go watch it if you'd like. Um, the thing is, is that civet doesn't smell like the animalic civet, like you're thinking in something like, um, you know, if you're thinking that civet is going to be something like, uh, this, like furio or like, uh, Koros. You're big, big time mistaken. The civet that's done in Zoologist is more like Mitsuko or Shepra Extraordinaire by Roja. It's like a, it's a proper Shepra. It's just named civet. There's a little bit of civet in the base. Um, you could try it, but honestly, if you are wanting to try something a little bit more challenging, I would recommend you try two zoologists if you like the challenging fragrances. One would be, well, you could try three. One would be Sacred Scarab, but I really like Sacred Scarab. I think it's probably the best zoologist. Um, two 
you could try Hyrax. Hyrax is kind of challenging. Um, I did a top five Hyrax fragrances. You can go check that out. You can go try to buy or, or sample those five if you would like. It was only, I did, it was like a top five. This was one of them. Uh, Hyrax is good. I enjoyed it. I like it. I don't love it though. And uh, probably Sacred Scarab is the only one and Camel are the two that are really loves for me. Oh, and Moth. I've got a full bottle of Moth. You can try Moth. Uh, but if you really want to be challenged, try Tyrannosaurus Rex. My God, man. The size of the perfume alone. It's one of the biggest fragrances of all of all time. Uh, it's right up there with Promise by Frederick Maul. Jeremy's top three favorite. Beaver is popular in Asian countries because they don't know what a beaver also means in English-speaking countries. <laughs> <laughs> I like where beaver's going now. See, that's the thing with Prince fragrances. If I give them time, I enjoy them. But I don't like the way he opens his fragrances. I think he needs to spend more time on his openings. Um, they all have that similar overdone spiciness that doesn't appeal to me. But now I'm enjoying it. In fact, it may even end up being my favorite, but you've got to wait. Obviously, well, what's it been? Half an hour? You've got to wait. You've got to wait for it to get to this point. It's getting much, much better. Do not buy PDLN. Ramsey has alternatives. <laughs> In 30 years, people will be hunting down vintage PDM Mancera, BDK, and Ishio saying fragrances now aren't what they used to be in the good old days. Oh, God, dude. You, I, I fear you're right. I still have the same, some of the OG Beaver left. It was a heavy musk fragrance. I never tried the new one. Interesting. This is a heavy, dark, charred wood fragrance. Amber woods to the max. Huge amber woods. I would honestly, if you were going to force me to buy a fragrance of this caliber, I would probably just buy Corpus Equus by Naomi Goodsir. I feel Corpus Equus is better done. That was a Bertrand Ducha for personally. It's just my opinion. Bellam. Okay. Bellam. Yeah. Put the hat on that A. <laughs> Where does it stop? Never. I feel a common smell running through a lot of the zoologist fragrances. I enjoyed the complete sample set and now I own five. Nice. Preacher, teacher. Could we focus on removing microplastics from our water and leave the perfumes alone? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I'll send you an email with pics of the seller's page after the stream. I know it was risky, but it was I, I was feeling it might be legit. Doesn't mean it's not legit just because he's only sold five, but uh, usually I prefer to try to buy from sellers with... Oh, God. Dude, what are you guys doing to me? Shalimar or Mitsuko? I mean, fuck. Do you like uh, Michael Jordan or do you like Larry Bird or do you like LeBron James? I mean, or do you like Kobe Bryant? I mean, Shalimar is the is the closest to my heart of any of the Guerlains because of what it did for me, what I talked about earlier, um, because of how it opened my mind and allowed me to try so many other fragrances. I would have never discovered Mitsuko if not for Shalimar. However, I think Mitsuko is probably technically the greatest fragrance of all time. But for me personally, Shalimar is right here, right on my heart. So that's that's the way that I feel about it. Shalisuko, yes, that's right. Olivia Creed wanted to be a historian as a youngster too. He figured out creating his own version of history was his way to make money. Ah, uh, good old Olivier Creed, the bastard, the billionaire, the billionaire Olivier Creed living in his castle. Once the sale of uh, Creed finally went through to uh, BlackRock, then he allowed people like um, he allowed people like um, Jean Christophe Herot to finally come out and say he did a Ventus. You know, it's just like, now that you got your billion dollar sale, you can now tell the truth. It's like, come on, man. 
what sucks is I hate what sucks is I love this, you know, and I have no I have no qualm about saying I love it. But man, I mean, and then the best part is, you know, all of these years they played this game about, oh, we made stuff for the royal families from the 1800s. And I mean, think about this. They literally claimed that their first fragrance was from 1776 or something. Royal English leather. They claim that was for what King Henry the second or something. So they're claiming they went all the way back to 1700s making a fragrance, right? Uh, and now as Olivier Creed leaves Creed, he just dumps in their lap this bombshell of, you know, the truth starting to come out. BlackRock has to clean up the mess. So now they have to write ad copy like, even though we have a storied history, our true or our our um, modern story begins in the 1960s with Olivier Creed, you know, and it's like, oh, God. Like, imagine having to backtrack that hard. Vintage Mike V right there. The presentation of Fragrance Dubois is possibly the best ever. I really don't like Fragrance Dubois, mate. I've never smelled anything except for Heritage. Fragrance Dubois Heritage is one of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled. Go watch my blind sniffing episode. There was one of them where Fragrance Dubois... Uh, uh, Armando slipped a fragrance Dubois in there and I had no clue what it was. All I, all I knew was I kept saying how cheap it smelled, how terrible it smelled. And then come to find out it was like a $600 fragrance Dubois. Finally, Javoy is selling Amouage in Paris. I've taken Memoir Man new bottle and seems it becomes a skin scent after an hour and a half. Tried Epic Man from the bottle. Oh, dude, that's terrible to hear about Memoir. Um. Mike V. Olivier Greed is a fake historian, just like Eric Von Den Denishin. I'll send you our key samples. Thank you, Rachel. You're very kind. You guys are amazing. Is Lyric Man the Rose one? Yes, it is. It's very, very good. Um, however, it is a fresh rose. And the first time I smelled, the first time I smelled this, I had one of those uh, mini bottles, one of those like mini amouage sample sets or whatever. And um, I remember the first time I ever smelled this, I wore it once, I wore it twice, and I completely gave up on it. Like I gave it to my mother. I was like, I can't wear this. This is this is a rose. I shouldn't be smelling like a rose. Um, and uh, I remember I gave it to my mother. And then years later, like the scent kept coming back to me, you know, like, like the memory of the scent, what it was, was so powerful. I would just think about it. I would just randomly think about Lyric Man. I'm like, I have to get this back. And luckily I found an older bottle. You can see it doesn't say Lyric Man on the front or the sides. It only says it right here on the collar. Um, and I think it's made in Oman, but I don't know. Uh, but this is a great rose. Fantastic. It's um, very fresh, probably traditionally more feminine than Lyric Woman is, uh, but there's a lovely pine in here, and the pine makes it green, and they've added lime, and um, from memory, I think there is, let me just look it up, because there's also, there is a... Angelica. Angelica is the other big note. So there's ginger and angelica with this green galbanum and rose and saffron. And the saffron has that uh, Middle Eastern, you know, it's like a middle, it's like a fresh take on a Middle Eastern rose with that amouage incense and pine. It's beautiful. So, so good. Uh, so romantic. Like maybe the perfect Valentine's Day fragrance. Maybe I'll do a stupid top 10 Valentine's Day video like everyone else is doing. This would be my number one, hands down. This will be my number one if I had to do that video. Arquise is a pretty solid house. Nice. Good to hear it. It's boring to me. I find the patchouli and misfits to be really high quality. Never smelled misfits. 
Tried it once, Eric. Not bad, but slightly too feminine for me. Only own Indigo Smoke, but there are quite a few I like to buy. Never see them at discounters, though. Arquiste. You guys still talking about Arquiste? When Victor finally decides to do a duck perfume, it'll feature a huge hydration note. That's right. You are spot on, my friend. Well, ducks live in water, so it's only natural. Wow, never heard of that one. Concept of sloth is putting common aromatherapy notes in the scent and mix it with a lot of hay and oak moss. I like where, I like where, I really like where it ended up going. Just like I hated where beaver ended up going. Beaver and sloth are exact opposites. I loved the first couple minutes of beaver. Hated the first couple minutes of sloth. Now I hate beaver and I really like sloth. They're reversed. I really don't like that amber wood charred smoke thing that, that the guy, whoever did beaver used here, Chris Bartlett. I don't like what he did with it. I'd love to smell the vintage. I'd love to smell all the vintages. Nordstrom didn't have it. I might even prefer Nanban to leather oud modern formulation, but don't quote me on that. Interesting. I'll school you, Ramsey. You must appreciate PDM, mate. Uh, you're in the wrong stream for that, I have to tell you. Although, I've told you before, I will have an open mind, and I will do a video on PDM very soon because someone sent me a um, sample of Leighton Exclusive, so there will be a video coming soon. But um, is that the original or 90s Shalimar? The original came out in 1925. No, this is not an original bottle. I think this is from the 70s or 80s, but I honestly don't know. It's the EDT. It depends on which one you look up. Uh, there's a bunch of different versions, but yeah. Hope you all had a better day at work than I did. Glad to be here. Sorry to hear that, Alan. A new and probably last scent for zoologists from Prin will be launching in 24, featuring the marijuana accord. I don't know if I like, I don't know if I'm into that marijuana thing. Um, my favorite cannabis fragrance I've ever tried is that uh, Kinski by Kinski. There's a cannabis note in there that's just perfect. But it's um, it just kind of adds this greenness to it almost, you know, doesn't smell like you just smoked a J. Old is gold. Zoologist skunk. Hey, that's a good one. Make it very animalic. I'm really liking where sloth is going. All right. This is good. Um, I just don't like the way Prin uses those. I don't like the openings. I wish he could do something with the openings. He'd have a... He'd have a huge hit on his hand. I just don't know if I can stand the first half an hour to get to what it's turned into, you know? Nothing more I hate than these happy reviews right on. Slowly warming up to sloth. Ah, uh, I see what you did there, Mike. You coy boy, you. Alan Hansen. Hello, sir. Got to leave for work. Listen while I drive. No good jokes that make me wreck, please. Don't talk to me. I'm not the joke man. Talk to Mike. Inverse Ramsey is an ET. I can't talk about that. Black Caviar by... I don't even want to read that comment. God forbid. Love me some Black Caviar. My first Electimus. Never smelled it. So all just discovery sets are some of the best value in diverse sampling and fun available, in my opinion. It has been fun. I've really enjoyed this, and I still have more to go. We still have uh, probably two more videos, because we still have uh, musk deer. I'll talk about moth, even though I've got a bottle. Seahorse. I'm going to do the comparison video with the old rhinoceros to the new rhinoceros. 
Um, and then we've got Cockatiel. We've got Bat, Dragonfly, and Moth. So we still have uh, more zoologist fun to come. You're right. It's a lot to explore. He has a lot of fragrances. Um, I, I know some houses have had a hard time, you know, keeping up with things once they get to that many perfumes. So I'll be interested to see how he plays it with the addition of however many more fragrances he has planned. Ten more, five more. Let's do Chipmunk next. Chipmunk is done by Pia Long. I'm pretty sure if memory serves, Chipmunk is supposed to be nutty. So we've got one, we've got Beaver, and we've got Nutty. All in one episode. What more could you ask for, folks? All right, let's catch up on some comments since I'm always behind. That is... Um, That's very pleasant. Reminds me just a touch of that new amouage that I smelled. What was it called? Um, but I actually think I like this more than the amouage I smelled. What was that amouage I smelled? It was... Let's see if I can find it. See how good my memory is. Um, let's see, what was that M wash called? It was called, uh, it's got to be coming up here. Man. Here it is. Uh, it was called uh, Guidance. It was called Guidance. Guidance had this uh, frankincense and hazelnut combination. But I actually think I like Chipmunk more than Guidance. Guidance was the Queen Tom Beach. Um, I liked them both. But there's something about this Chipmunk that I actually really like in the opening. Maybe it's this quince note. I don't know what it is. Very unique. I like it. It's very wearable, too. Um, let's see. Chipmunk. All right, let's do some comments. I love Moth very much. I think Moth is uh, extremely uh, artistic. You know, there's so many transitions, and it's from that perfumer, uh, Inaba Tamu, I think his name was. Forget, I forget his name, but he did a bang-up job with this, and I really like what he did with uh, Nightingale, too. Black caviar is both clever and classy. I recently got green Irish tweed as a gift. Is the new batch even good? Hello, the Fortnite guy. I don't think I've seen you in the stream before. Um, I don't buy any new creeds past 2017, so I honestly can't speak to it. All of my creeds are older. Creed's a house that I just avoid. I go for the old bottles that look like this, the 125 mils, or I try to go for the bottles that look like this. The 75 mils. These are what the old Creed bottles basically look like. So the new ones that are 50 mils. So the 75 mils shrunk to 50. The 120 mils shrunk to 100. And um, so, yes, I don't I, I don't buy any new Creeds. That's, that's a motto. The house, un, unless I get a formal apology, unless Creed literally gives me a formal apology, for what I think happened in 2018 when I bought my uh, Aventus batch, which I'll even show them the damn batch code because I've got the uh, flat home still. 
When I bought this, and you can see I used it all because you basically had to drench yourself in it to get half an hour of projection. This is a uh, batch 18K01. Literally one of the worst things I've ever smelled in my life. Uh, and I paid very close to retail for this. Actually, I think I paid retail for this. I bought this from the Creed Boutique online or whatever they call it, Creed Online, because I was worried about fakes and uh, I was wearing a lot of Aventus. I wanted a, a backup. And uh, so I bought this flacon. Worst thing I've ever smelled. So terrible. It smelled like a cross between Aventus and Aventus Cologne. And come to find out later on, that it was probably in, right around the time that Olivier Creed was in talks to sell the house. So my guess is they were lowering the quality of the ingredients to pump up the profit as much as possible. So Olivier Creed could ask for a billion dollars from BlackRock. So I think I got shafted on this and I will never buy another new Creed unless I get a formal apology for selling me this shit, selling me basically uh, the worst reformulate. I'm never, I will, ne I mean, and I've got Aventus going back to 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I've had six bottles of Aventus, some of them in different, you know, various stages of being used. This is a 2015 bottle I just happen to have here. I know Aventus. This was not Aventus. This was a terrible, terrible joke. And uh, I was so pissed off. And that's where I went never again. I will never again buy a new Creed. Uh, so honestly, I don't know about new batches of Creed because they have lost my trust. Hello, Shiva. Good to see you, brother. I hope you're enjoying my m -Wash samples I sent you. I hope you're still willing to come on the channel one day. I'd love to hear your early impression. Which animal do you want to see next ad? A new zoologist in the future? Uh, that's a good question. What do you guys think, chat? Fortnite, you better be a no-build player. New green Irish tea is good, but weaker than older. My man. Mitsuko might be the goat. Yeah, it might be. It might be the most technically sound fragrance of all time. I still need to smell the X-ray. I've never smelled the X-ray. I can envision zoologists doing peacock or bird of paradise, obvious visual reasons. Yeah. Zoologists did deer musk. Is muskrat on the way? Zoologists should create lyre bird. Oh, God. <laughs> he needs to get air in his memoir. I don't know, man. Even when my memoir was new, it, it lasted more than an hour. I have a sample of Cannabis Intense by Fragrance Dubois, clone of Ancre Noir for 575 pounds. Ooh, Ancre Noir is one of the best value values for money in all of perfume. I think, um, I think Nathalie Lorson is a genius, brilliant. Everything she touches is gold, including the often ignored Zadig and Voltaire. This is him. She worked wonders with this, man. One, one of my favorite. I love wearing this. It's just like, it's like Ancre Noir for incense for me. It's the best way I can describe it. Shalimar and Mitsuko are cosmic gods, but honestly should not be compared to one another other than the lazy narrative that both are Guerlain's two classics, but different classics. Oh yeah, for sure. Guerlain. I'm not by any means pro Olivier Creed, but you have to admit he didn't skimp on the first natural, finest natural materials. They were, yes, they were expensive, but houses now charge more, far more for synthetics. Yes, he used to. That was the selling point. That's why I have all of these, you know, because you're exactly right. I trusted my nose and he used to put it. This smells like the finest natural ingredients in my 2015 bottle. My 2018 bottle, I mean, I wish I would have kept some juice just as a example of what this is. This is shit. It was terrible. It was literally a completely different fragrance. I mean, I would spray this on. I would douse myself with this. Drive to work, get to work. And the girl that sat next to me, I would go, hey, can you smell this? She'd go, nope. Nothing. I don't smell anything. 
it was like water. And when you could smell it for the first 30 minutes, it ended up smelling like a Ventus cologne. So, yeah, I think I think that 350, pardon me, exactly. I think that he was trying to boost the value of Creed before he sold it to BlackRock by cutting the quality of the ingredients in these years. Now, BlackRock may have improved the quality of the ingredients again now that they own it. And, you know, they own the world, so maybe cost is not an issue to them. But to me, I'll never forgive that transgression, not unless they come on here and give me an apology, which would basically be an admittance of what they did. So unless I get that apology, F Creed, no more. I'm out. Unless I find a vintage uh, bottle, a uh, flacon of Tabarome, I want a flacon of Tabarome. Vintage Tabarone from 2010 that came in these black homes. Uh, impossible to find. And uh, I also want a bottle of Green Valley. Impossible to find. And no, if they re-release Green Valley, I will not buy it. I want a vintage bottle of Green Valley. I sold my Lyric. Rose de Taif should be your number one Valentine's Day fragrance. I mean, Rose de Taif would probably be number two. Lyric Man's number one for me. It's so, it's just the perfect romantic fragrance. How about an anti-Valentine's Day top 10? That's a good idea. I could put stuff like this in there. Furio and Koros and Figment Man. The stuff to keep away. That's funny. What do you guys think? I should do it. I think Victor and Duck will end up as Mallard. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Michael John, uncut gem number one, clearly. Check out PDN Hamdani. Never smelled it, Michael Pugas. Although I would like to. I'm not, you know, I'm open to trying some of the Parfum de Marley's. I just don't have very high hopes. Blackpool duck. Um, isn't it weird that Herol hasn't had a single relevant release apart from Aventus? I mean, Bourdon, we all know, rest. he did have a relevant release. Uh, he released, I don't have a bottle, but I have a sample. He released a fragrance from Dolce & Gabbana called um, The One Mysterious Nights. And it's really good, actually. It's a really good rose. Um, it's, a, it's a Middle Eastern style rose. So it's saffron, rose, and oud, and labdanum, and tonka, and amber. It's that kind of style. But it's really good. I like it. It's, it's actually one of my better or favorite designer rose fragrances, if you will. Beaver's dry down is wood plus castorium. I don't think this smells like castorium dry down at all, Victor. I just, I don't get the castorium. I got the castorium a little bit in the opening, but in the dry down, all I get is amber, like that burnt amber woods accord that they use for charred woods. I just, I don't get it. And I love castorium. Castorium is one of my favorite ingredients of all time. I mean, I did a, this is not a top 10 castorium video and I ranked them and Teus was number one, but stuff like, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned Kinski by Kinski, La Dule Exquise, you know, there's castorium and stuff like this. Imitation Man has castorium. I know my castorium. I don't get very much castorium in beaver. No, no offense, that's just my nose. I get a lot of that charred wood accord that reminds me of uh, Corpus Equus. It's definitely not for me. Although, back to Chipmunk. Chipmunk is very pleasant. It's, um... Chipmunk is very pleasant. Let's read, let's read the blurb. The lush green of the treetops fades to a dull gold. What seems a peaceful transition is actually raises a blaring alarm to the creatures below. Time is running out, but for generations, mighty oaks have fulfilled a promise to provide, and leaves are not the only bounty tumbling to the forest floor. Chipmunks scurry among the, the detritus in their quest to collect the plumpest acorns. They eagerly gar gather what they can, and cheeks bulging with nuts, scamper home to line their snug burrows before 
Falling leaves give way to biting snow. Top notes of quince, pink pepper, red mandarin, cardamom, nutmeg, heart of chamomile, hazelnut, fir balsam, oak absolute, and earthy notes. Base of cedarwood, amiris, patchouli, vetiver, benzoin, apopanax, guyac wood, and animal notes. I don't get very much animal notes. I just get a lot of pleasant. I get that hazelnut, actually, and that's why it reminded me of um, that amouage. Really reminded me of that amouage uh, guidance because there's this frankincense bit to it. Uh, I think I think Chipmunk may have actually inspired Guidance, Victor. I think Guidance took little bits and pieces from Chipmunk, to be honest with you. Um, it's nice. It's good. I like it. I don't think I would buy a bottle, but I like it. Valentine's Day Massacre would be an anti-Valentine's. That's right. Valentine's Day Massacre video. I like that idea. 10 fragrances to keep your partner off of you on Valentine's Day. Eugene's favorite cannabis fragrance is Hindu Kush. He might work on a flanker with Antoine. <laughs> Hindu Kush. But I've got to experience the cannabis fragrance Victor's mentioned, and it's a big one. Oh, wow. Interesting. Cannabis is super tricky. Note, 99% of the time it turns out horrible. Yes, I heard that new uh, cannabis Abbey Rouge, Abbey Rouge flanker is shite. Never smelled it, though. I got a sneak peek of the upcoming zoologist snake bottle. It's the only logo that has a human on it. Hint, he's winking and has dye, dyed black hair. <laughs> Dude, I studied maps for fun as a teenager. Other than black caviar being clever and classy, it manages to whisper the winter seaside at night. Never smelled it. Yeah, we played interesting geography. Why is everyone fascinated with snakes? There's a whole snake collection by Stefan Umber Lucas. I would like to smell that. There's some serious talk of Aaron Rodgers going to the Raiders. I know. That would be amazing. I would love to have A-Rod come win us a championship with, uh, with Adams. Arquiste is good stuff. Awesome. Can't wait. That would be a good video to do one of these too. Arquiste. I mean, I have so many sample sets still where we could continue this process of uh, testing new fragrances I haven't smelled live on stream like this, knock them all out and put the have the video for posterity's sake. Chipmunk is good. I'm really liking what Sloth is drawing down to though. That opening was... Oh, this is a complex bit because Panda, uh, I wouldn't rank highly because I just prefer Figment Man. Oh, God, I love Figment. That's grown on me so much. And uh, Beaver started out with so much promise and I've, I really hated the dry down. Although it's starting to become a little bit softer. I think I'm starting to get a little bit more of the base note. So I'm starting to get more of that softer vanilla with a little bit of leather but man that whatever that heart or dark woods or dry woods note or whatever that chemical is i'm not digging it uh and sloth opens up so challenging but it's drawing down so beautifully and chipmunk's probably the most uh just grab and spray of the bunch to me you know even though panda Christian Carbonell uh, made it a lot more wearable than the originals, what it sounds like. Because I know AC from Smells Good said it smelled like a panda and like molested your flowers in the original 2014 version. So Christian Carbonell's made it a lot more wearable for sure. Um, there's still a little something challenging with that earthy, you know, bit going chipmunk for me is the one you can just spray and go. Like if you want something easy to wear, but different, and it smells like that Guidance by Amouage, or I should say Guidance by Amouage borrows from Chipmunk a little bit with that frankincense-hazelnut combination. Although Chipmunk um, 
doesn't have that rose like guidance. I think guidance really goes more for that rose saffron Middle Eastern style where chipmunk focuses a little bit more on the balsam earthy notes and the woods, oak absolute, you know, the trees that chipmunks climb on and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they, they kind of go in a little different directions, but, uh, you can see obviously chipmunk was, um, popular within the, within the big shots of the fragrance world. Snakes are so elegant and beautiful. People only know what you tell them. That's true. Michael Thompson and yucky, terrifying greatest collab ever equals rich Mitch and Victor Wong make duck the fragrance. Yes. They need to make that happen. That would be an amazing collab. Could you imagine? And then he can always do Ram. Dushan, I, I've hiked the Hindu Kush. We'll chat about it one day. Wow, that's amazing, Rachel. Rachel, the wonderful. Have you tried L and Ella? That's a frag I want to wear. Winter Seaside at night. GMG, those are the only Arquis I don't own yet. Hindu Kush, Pamir, Tian Shan. Buy vintage 75 mil bottles as most 120s are fakes. Never seen a fake 75 ever, and I collect them. That's a good shout, but I wouldn't say most are fakes, but there are fakes out there. But yes, you're right. 75 mils are a good way to go with Creed. Um, and if you go old enough, you can get the old fire hose atomizer. They used to call these atomizers the fire hose atomizer uh, with the Creed logo on top and uh it just douses you with juice i mean one of the best atomizers in the game like uh there should be like sound effects and fucking fireworks go off when you spray it it's just like this is basically the new the new creed atomizer that they changed over to in 2014 and this is the old creed atomizer that's 20, that's half the early half of 2014 and prior. Like this is a 2013 bottle. This is a 2015 bottle. The atomizer is still really good here, but this old fire hose atomizer, you can kind of see the differences in how they're built. My God, man. I mean, it just dumps juice on you. Now you know you're in a you're in a nerdy fragrance channel when we're talking about the differences in vintage creed atomizers all right this is a lot different channel boz then let's get the super chats going no offense to dan i do like him as a person holy shit you went through a flacone of aventus an entire flacone bro i mean but to be fair i would i would hit myself with like 30 sprays and it would be gone in 30 minutes I've taken a bottle of Meander from Amouage and I like it. Guidance sample was too feminine for me, but honestly, I think the house is more, no more, but old Christopher Chong artistic perfume. Yes, it's dead. The house is dead, dude. Long live Amouage. What about Millicene and Pity Al? I've got a sample. I'll do a, I'll do a video on it. I have a bottle actually, but it's turned. Well, it's not completely turned, but it's... Um... Here's another, uh, here's another Aventus bottle just in case. So this one is um, 14 MO1. It's not exactly bone dry, but it's damn close. You can see a little juice in there. So So you can see this is what the old Millicene Imperial bottles basically looked like from the around the 2000s. So late 90s, early 2000s, this is what they looked like. They were all gold. Then they changed them to the white with the gold sticker, you know. Um, kind of similar to... Kind of similar to something like this. This is an old Virgin Island water. I've got enough to do a 
video on that one day too, and probably this summer. Um, but this bottle has basically, I don't even want to spray it because it's kind of turned. Um, I like Millicene Imperial. It's a Pierre Bourdon. It's just, um, it's the same problem you have with Creed. The new Creed, uh, they've, they've almost reformulated it to the point where you're just as well off going with the clone. You know, you have to go vintage, but the problem is Creed's turn very fast. This is one of the only bottles I've ever bought that's gone bad on me. So, and you can tell it's a real Creed. It's not bullshit. Like, you know, the ab the ring around the inside is white like it should be. So maybe one day I'll sell this to like a collector that just, you know, is like a bottle collector. Like I'll tell them the juice is not up to par and, and still sell this. Let's go back. Let's catch up on the comments. And then we'll go back through these one more time. Tried it, but I wasn't impressed. Chipmunk is great. It is great, isn't it? It's nice. I don't know if I'd call it great, but it's very wearable. I like it. Um, I like that. Hate. Usually I don't like hazelnut. In fact, I hate, I hate hazelnut and coffee. But the hazelnut, incense, you know... Wood combo is actually really nice. It's nice. Um, I think this is much more peppery. Um, and that quince note is very well done in the opening. I really like it. I'm a fan. Chipmunk. Cheap punk, says Dushan. Thanks, Alan. I'll grab a sample. I own a bottle of mercurial cashmere. Never smelled it. Cheap monk. What's your opinions on Guerlain Heritage EDT? Oh, you asked me about Guerlain Heritage EDT with two hours and 27 set, two hours and 27 minutes into a two and a half hour stream, Ace of Soul. Uh, it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's, um, it is, um, uh, let's see. Let me find a bottle. Okay, so the EDT is my favorite. Don't buy the EDP is what I would tell you. And if you can, try to find one that looks like this with the gold cap. The gold cap is the one that you want. And if you flip it over to the bottom... You'll be able to see that it has a five-digit batch code right there at the bottom. Five digits. Um, sorry, this one's actually six. ZK2CG2. Um, and, and yes, I mean, this is one of my favorite masculines of all time. It's earthy. It's forest floor-like. It's patchouli. It's a rock star patchouli, as my buddy AC from... The channel smells good, says Rockstar Patchouli, and he's spot on. This patchouli basically spawned Lidge, L'Enstant de Guerlain, um, and then L'Enstant de Guerlain O Extreme. It was the patchouli that Jean-Paul Guerlain created in Heritage that spawned Lidge. Um, you know, if I could make one masculine fragrance, I think it would be this. If you said, Ramsey, you're a perfumer, you can affix your name to one masculine, what would it be? It would be Heritage. Heritage is, it's so deep too, because it links all of the Guerlains. It's the Heritage of Guerlain. So you can smell the old Guerlains in this. It's like, uh, and the bottle is supposed to be uh, Fakult's Pendulum. So you can see kind of the Pendulum. It's just everything about it is brilliant. You know, Fakult's pendulum was supposed to show that the pendulum is not moving. It's the Earth's rotation, right? And this is kind of like the centerpiece of the Guerlain house that rotates around it. You know, you can smell so many other fragrances in here. 
past and present is what's brilliant about it. Not just the not just the past. You can also smell the present in here. Uh, it's it's a masterpiece. It's one of the best masculines ever. How's that for an answer, Ace of Soul? One of the best masculines ever of all time. I love. I, I really like Chipmunk too, Rachel. It's good. It's it's the most wearable of the bunch. But I think probably the one that has caught my attention the most, even though I hated that opening, is Sloth. The dry down of Sloth is um, really intriguing to me. I really like what it's doing. But then again, um, Sloth is all about that, um, what did they say, oak moss, frankincense, hay, which, you know, hay has that tobacco-like smell. And I love tobacco. And so this is, and the mushrooms almost give it like this forest floor, sheepra-like smell. And there's honey, and I love honey in here. I think the honey is what actually makes it. Or there's beeswax, not honey. If there wasn't beeswax, I think I would hate this. But I'm 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 coming around to sloth. I really wish I could just skip fast forward the first um, you know hour, but I like it. Like the stream, thank you, Rachel. Appreciate that. I don't say it enough, but it does help with the uh, the good old YouTube algorithm. Good Lord, Heritage is one of the greatest fragrances of all time. It is. I love it. And, you know, when I wear it, it makes me feel like I'm wearing. So it, it feels like I'm wearing what I should be wearing, if that makes sense. Like it feels like just so right on me, like I'm just at home with it. You know, everything I do, every place I go, I never feel like, oh, maybe I should have worn something lighter or heavier or you know, hot or cold, whatever it is, it just always feels perfect. And I can wear this any day, anytime, hot, cold, spring, fall, rain, shine. I mean, if I had a masculine signature scent, this might be it. This might be it. Um, this and Teus Bellamy are, are going to be the main challengers. That's right. Always listen to Anuj. Anuj the Great. Black Rock might send you a bottle of Aventus Cologne by way of apology. Those bastards. 1950s Mitsuko Extra. Oh my God, Rachel. Jesus, thank you. It's very kind of you. Um, you might be costing me a small fortune though, because now I'm going to have to go hunt that down. By the way, I have an interesting items for you, my dear. We'll send you details later this week. Ooh. Interesting items, eh, Anuj? Rachel, you're the real MVP. She is. She's amazing. <clears throat> it's probably more than a coincidence. I own three by Electimus. I've never smelled anything from that house. Alan makes me feel good about my purchase. <laughs> I do know the Castorium. This is not Castorium. No offense, Victor. I don't get castorium from this beaver. That sounded bad. Uh, if it smells like perfume, what, it, what was the saying? If it smells like cologne, leave it alone. There's a surprise in Anuja's box for you. Yeah, it's a good thing Mike V is not here for this uh, joke fest that we're throwing. We're, we're just lobbing him softballs and he's not even here. Thank you very much for that. The fragrance I remember most from of those that you showed me on Dan's stream was the chestnut one in that big, unusual looking bottle. Sorry to be controversial, but sometimes, but sometime is good. There's some very bad Creed and very good fragrance Dubois. Let's be open, even if they make some mistakes. I like blue. Well, I haven't smelled those, Ringo, so I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. Uh, you can have the worst house in the world put out something good. I just, as a general rule, I don't like houses like Fragrance Dubois, Parfum de Marly, Initio. Um, you know, those are just, those aren't the kind of houses that I usually go for. 
but there's so many parfums de Marley and fragrance Dubois and Initios I've never smelled. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be open to sharing my first thoughts with you, but don't be surprised if I just say shite, don't be offended. If I just say shite. I think the original bat inspired figment for men. Interesting. The original bat can still be purchased, right? It's called night flight. Right? No, it's called Night Flyer, right? I've got to look that up. I forget what the original bat's called. PDN Hamdani reminded me of Private Label by Javoy, but with more Cipriol and less camphorous. Pretty bad longevity. That sounds like I might like that, Gonzalo. I love Private Label. I have a bottle, luckily. I have both Mysterious Night and Royal Night. Never thought you would have liked it, to be honest. The one DNA is pretty good. Polish nose and stuff. I like uh, Mysterious Night. Yeah, as a rose, yeah, I like it. But I, you can, if you wear Mysterious Night and then, you know, wear Aventus, you can sort of see a little bit of that Jean Christophe Hero DNA. I don't think anyone would have guessed before. But now that you know, check it out. Our, our loyal community is the best. Everyone always willing to genuinely send samples, decants one another for nothing more than pure love of the hobby. I'm generally proud. Yes. Agreed. 100% agree, Anuj. That's one of the things that really shocked me whenever I, um, whenever I started the channel, it wasn't even, um, it wasn't even 50 subscribers in. I had people sending me stuff and and it wasn't for the recognition because I literally had nobody watching. I had 50 subscribers, you know, uh, and and they were doing it simply out of the kindness of their hearts, number one. And number two, they said they were really, truly interested in my opinion. And I was shocked. I was not ready for that at all. In fact, I was much more ready for people talking shit to me in the comments, if that makes sense, you know. Love the original bat. That's one of all my all-time faves. But I didn't get much of the shit talk. Uh, probably as the as the channel grows, that'll probably continue to come out. But for now, I don't get very much of that. And what I do, I either just, you know, uh, respond back. Like someone left me a comment on one of the videos recently. I forget which one. And they always pick old videos. They never pick the new ones where people will see. It's like, you know... They always pick the old videos and this guy's like, you basically just ramble or you basically take 40 minutes to say something that should take five minutes. And I was like, don't watch then. I didn't take the comment down. I just told him not to watch. And why are you watching? Why are you watching and complaining about how long I take to say something? Don't watch. Go watch someone else, dude. That comment's still up. I look so far and wide to find my bottle of the original bat. It had a very unusual shape, Rachel, the bottle. And I remember you said it had chestnut in it. Yes, the news to be unselfish. It's a very high act of civilization. That's right. Totally believe you, Boz. Just trying to remember which one. What was the shape of the bottle? Could it be one of my sense of wood bottles? Bosman's off to bed. Plum and cognac or bread and chestnut? Hard to explain. It was not round. Dodecadron. Dodecadron. A boat. Hmm, okay, that helps. Don't mess with Rachel. That's right. Just wanting to see if Rachel remembers. That's how you know you're off the deep end. That narrows it down. Maybe vintage fat. The fat. Need to go look at my thousand bottles. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes you just want to stare at them, right? Just tell them it's okay. You'll be back soon. You know, just don't don't panic. Just stay where you are. Be with your bottle friends. We'll be back soon. Don't worry. You'll get a lot of use. The one time I went onto Mr. Smelly's channel and he was shilling super chats every 30 seconds, I decided never to go back. 
Uh, I'm I'm lucky because I expect zero super chats, zero. So whenever I get one, even if it's for a dollar, you know, I'm I'm always like, that's the coolest thing ever. When you do it for because this is like a side thing for me, right? When you do it for a living though, and you're sitting there watching the time go by and no super chats are coming in, I could see how that would, you'd be like, hey man, we got to pay the bills. Come on. That's why this should always remain a hobby. This should never be someone's like job, you know, because it changes them. It changes the way they think. It changes what they say, how they view things. Um, we should hold a funeral for Amwaj. They're dead, Margie. It's a very, very silly place. Yes. Fat de fat is not shaped like a boat. That's right. Yeah, he's more into the drama. The bottom is a D K drawn, which is not boat like to me. I don't know. I don't know that word. It's kind of like a big old fashioned bottle of cognac or something. Shaped like a boat is not something generally associated with fragrances. It's Polo Safari. Polo Safari. Boz is fucking with us for men. Not many fragrances got chestnut in it. That should be a clue. All right, I'm going to look up this damn chestnut note. All right, we got Zadigan Voltaire. This is her replica by the fireplace. Gentlemen, reserve privé. Let's see if there's a boat. Boat. Merchant Loop by Latizan. Are you sure you were sober, Boz? There's Madeline by Mask Milano. I don't see many boat fragrances with chestnut in it. There's Bread and Chestnut by Sense of Wood. I bet you that was it, Boz. Oh, yeah, the best bottle ever. I won't sleep until we solve this mystery. Damn it, Boz. Just say, quite using, Anuj. I'm not sure I'd say Safari has chestnut in it. Tell me about that in our language. Once upon a time, there was a chestnut boat. Oh, God. And it ended on Rachel's shelf. Polo makes the green bottles. Mea culpa. Dushan. It's all good. We shall solve the mystery. Let's just call it the chestnut boat. It's going to end up being some Lilabo. Oh, God. I just remember it was a pretty big bottle and about half of it was empty. Well, that narrows it down, Rachel. If I could, I'd send you pics of my frag shelf. Come on the stream, Rachel. Come on the stream. Show us your collection. We will solve the mystery. Am I right that you've not tried back all grease? I have not. That's right. That's one of the uh, Arige Le Dore's that I have not tried. You're exactly right, Nick. You know me well, sir. You know me well. Halloween stream. Okay, let me remember. I brought Francesca Bianchi to that stream. It was Eau de Anouge. <laughs> Nugler Cologne Flyaway Cannabis Note smells like the cannabis better used in bread-based edibles. Ugh. Even in the Listerine bottle, Heritage is so good. Agreed. I just prefer the EDT. The EDP has some this, something that's a little bit harsh when I smelled it. Yes, love Heritage. Wadazil is inspired from the old Heritage. Really? I never knew that. Was it divine perversion? 
Well, how are you going to know if she names it? Let me look up divine perversion. This bottle does not look like a boat. Is the silver cap up here? Yes, I think it is. I got the wood cap Listerine bottle. It's it's still very good. The gold cap is just, uh, it's just everything. Uh, I mean, if you love Heritage as much as I do, I think it's still worth it to, to hunt down a vintage gold cap. Twenty four Falberg. Honestly, I find Guerlain to be one of the best in terms of reformulation. I have a deep vintage and modern version of some of them, and the moderns are still excellent. Yes, hundred percent agree, Paroli. Hundred percent. Don't. One thing I will I will tell you guys, if you want my advice, when you see bottles of old Guerlain like this for five hundred bucks on eBay, don't do it. It's not worth it. Just go buy the modern version in the Listerine. It's um, it's going to be just as good. Guerlain does amazing reformulations. Oh, it's so good, though. Mm, I love Guerlain. Time to really go now. Peace, Boz. All right, and I caught up on the comments. Scent of the day, Vintage Accor by Avon. I have some Avon fragrances we're going to talk about. Thanks to Justin, a.k.a. Roger Graves. I just saw him in the chat. So we've got some Avons we're going to discuss one day. So this will be one of our blind sniffing streams. We've got um, Clint. We've got uh, Ty Winds. We've got Deep Woods. We have, uh, this is empty, but it was uh, spicy. We have uh, Oland, which I'm very excited about. That's a tobacco. And we have uh, Wild Country. So these should be fun. Sniffing vintage Avons, which uh, most people just completely tune out whenever they hear the word Avon. Trust me, there were vintage Avons that used real Mysore sandalwood, real ambergris, all of this stuff, you know? Ram the Amwaj Paul Bearer. Just put me in charge of the house, Amwaj. You know, just sign me as creative director. I'll make the life-saving decision to step down as creative director and hand the job back to Christopher Chong. Sense of wood, vetiver, and chestnuts. Matt, never, I don't think I've smelled that one. Ah, thank you, Nick. You're too kind, brother. Seriously, you are. You guys have put so much in front of me to get to smell. I never would have been able to without you. So uh, Anuj said it properly earlier. It's a testament to the community, honestly. Love you guys. Issue with doing YouTube as a job instead of a hobby is it turns into a nine to five with zero passion. That's it. And they're always asking for money. Let's get the super chats going. Yep. <laughs> Does anyone know why Chong left? No, we don't know what the story is, whether it's he just, it was time to move on or whether Amwaj kind of pushed him out because they wanted to go in a different direction and he wouldn't agree to it. I don't know. Either way, I think it's a decision that they will come to rue the day, rue the day that they let him go. Um, just one man's opinion. And maybe it's like Eugene said, maybe it's just an hour little circle that he's missed. Maybe everyone else is loving Amwaj right now. It is fun to talk to fragheads, man. It's fun to talk. It's fun to do these videos and put my thoughts out there. And it's fun to get through these samples and smell stuff I've never smelled. So let's get back to Macaque. Um, 
Macaque's just not for me. I mean, it's just that light, incense-y, fruity thing. Panda. Panda's nice, but I still take it as a more wearable version of Figment Man, which I'll just wear Figment Man. There's no need for Panda in my collection. Um, Beaver might be my least favorite. I thought it was going to be my most favorite because of the way it started. With The first couple minutes were amazing. And then it just evolved into this amber wood, charred, smoky amber woods. Did do not like that. Um, Sloth is the is the dark horse. First time I sprayed it, I thought, oh no, it's Prin Lomros back to his old tricks. But it's beautiful right now. It's challenging. It's different. Um, now the spices are blending with all of these other, you know, beeswax and cumin. Um, and then it has that hay that reminds you of tobacco with frankincense, myrrh, mushroom, oak moss, vanilla, tonka. It's actually really nice. This is good. This is a uh, multifaceted, layered, good perfume. It's just you got to sit through that opening, man. That opening is challenging for me. I don't like the opening of Sloth. And Chipmunk, Chipmunk's probably the most wearable of the bunch. You could just grab Chipmunk and spray it. It's um, it's it's uh, that hazelnutty, woody, earthy, you know, slightly resinous. There's a miris and a popinax in here. Nutmeg. It's really pleasant. Uh, I think I like this even more than the amouage I mentioned, purpose or whatever it was. Um, whatever that amouage that used the uh, whatever the amouage that used the hazelnut note. Let's see, what was the amouage that used the hazelnut note? It was the one I can never remember the name of. Guidance. It was guidance. Guidance was frankincense and pear with hazelnut, saffron, rose, jasmine, osmanthus, cista, sandalwood, akigala wood, ambergris, and vanilla. You just don't smell very many uh, hazelnut fragrances. Send me a link and I'll show you my shelves only just to solve the mystery. I spray. <laughs> He's already at bed, Rachel. I'm about to jet too. It's almost three hours. They are loving their free Amouage bottles. That's right. Just send me the free bottles. I'll, I'll say how great it is. Just put me on the free bottle list, please, Amouage. Put me on the free bottle list. <laughs> ah, thank you for that. I was a little bit confused there, Ringo. Thanks for clarifying that. Interesting. Honey Badger. We don't know. <laughs> That's a good one, Thistle. On that note, even though there's still 44 people in the chat, my throat is about to give out. So it's been a pleasure exploring these one, two, six zoologists today. Two macaque versions, four new ones. We only have two more of these to go. Tomorrow, I am not wearing a zoologist as my scent of the day, though. I'll tell you that. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have to run. It's been a pleasure. Uh, yeah, where's my free Roja bottles, Eric? Uh, I appreciate the support. Like the stream before you leave, please. Like the stream and leave a comment in the actual stream video. I like responding to the comments. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying these. I'm loving going through these with you. I think it's a great way to test perfume. So thanks to everyone for being here and commenting and just being a great part of our little fragrance family. It, it really is a, it's a blessing. I feel like, uh, I feel like I have a real sense of responsibility to you guys. You know what I mean? To tell the truth and do what's right. And um, so, so yes, I feel very blessed on one hand. On the other hand, I feel like I have a lot of responsibility to do what's right. Cause most people don't, like we say, most people take the free bottles and just, you know, and I want to be as honest as possible with you guys. So I very much appreciate it. Thank you to Victor Wong for sending these samples my way. It's been a pleasure. Uh, so we've got a couple more zoologists to go, and then we're going to move on to another brand. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Have a good evening. Bye now.